Ladies and gentlemen, let us all rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. The 36th session of the Senate in the first regular session of the 18th Congress is here by call to order. Let's pause for a minute of silent prayer. Thank you. The Secretary will please uh, call the roll. Roll call of members, the Honorable Senators Angara, Binay, Cayetano, De Lima, De La Rosa, Gilon, Gachalian, Go, Gordon, Ontiveros, Laxon, Lapid, Marcos, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Pimentel, Po, Recto, Redilla, Tolentino, Villanueva, Villar, Zubiri, Senate President Soto III. With 18 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I'd like to recognize the gallery today. We have with us uh, JCI uh, Philippines National President, Mr. Paul Jess Estrellado. He's here with us. Together with uh, board member A.J. Ribong, Ribong of uh, provincial, the province of Exudetan, Mindoro. Mr. President. I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 35th session, Monday, November 25th, and consider the same as approved. So Any much. objection? Before we uh, approve the journal, uh, may we know what happened to the journal of the 34th session? I believe it's not yet ready, Mr. Not President. Yet ready. I could All see right. the secretary nodding her, I mean, All right. crossing her head. Hearing no objection. Journal of the 35th, the, the, the 35th session is hereby approved. Mr. President, move that we proceed with the reference of business. Secretary will proceed. Reference of business, bills on first reading. Senate number 1186 entitled An Act Mandating the Department of Education, DepEd, to incorporate first aid in the physical education PE subject in the elementary and secondary school curricula in both public and private schools introduced by Senator Lapid. Referred to the Committee on Basic Education and uh, Arts and Culture. Senate number 1187, an act instituting one party consent, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 4200, otherwise known as an act to prohibit and penalize wiretapping and other related violations of the privacy of communication and for other purposes, and Republic Act number 9372, otherwise known as the Human Security Act of 2007, introduced by Senator Lacson. Referred to the Committees on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and National Defense and Security. Uh, peace, unification, and reconciliation. Senate number 1188, an act providing for the national energy policy and regulatory framework for the Philippine liquefied petroleum gas industry introduced by Senator Gachalian. Refer to the Committee on Energy and Trade. Senate number 1189, an act institutionalizing support mechanisms on matters of student discipline and classroom management for teachers and personnel in public school system introduced by Senator Poe. Refer to the Committees on Basic Education and Women. Senate number 1190, an act regulating class size in all public schools and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Poe. Referred to the Committees on Basic Education and uh, Finance. 
Resolutions. PS Resolution Number 220, entitled Resolution, directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the compliance of maritime safety standards set by the Maritime Industry Authority, Marina, and related issues on the effective implementation of our maritime transportation laws with the end in view of enacting amendments to existing legislations that will enhance protocols on the safety and quality of passenger transport services provided provide for effective supervision and regulation of all water transport in the country and ensure proper mobilization of resources for necessary maritime transportation infrastructure introduced by Senator Gachalian. Refer to the Committee on Public Services. PS Resolution Number 221, Resolution Directing the Proper Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation into the status and challenges of projects under the Build, Build, Build program and their modes of financing with the aim of ensuring transparency and accountability over its implementation, addressing issues and challenges that hamper its progress, and determining the need to legislate an infrastructure master plan policy introduced by Senator Gachalian. Refer to the Committee on Economic Affairs. P PS Resolution Number 222, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and the Committee on Youth to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the alleged enlistment and training of young people as child warriors with the end in view of instituting remedial measures to protect and promote the rights and interests of the youth of our country. Introduced by Senator De La Rosa. To the Committee on Public Order and Youth. PS Resolution Number 223, entitled Resolution, urging the appropriate Senate Committee to inquire in aid of legislation into the national security implications of Chinese ownership and control of the National Power Transmission Grid and for the Joint Congressional Energy Commission to conduct a national security audit of the NGCP's operations and facilities introduced by Senator Ontiveros. To the Committees on Public Services and Energy. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we uh, vote on third reading. Senate House Bill Number Five Four Three Seven under H House Bill Number Five Four Three Seven. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Any none. Consideration of measures in order. For the record, Mr. President, uh, this bill was distributed to members uh, complying with the three-day rule of the Constitution. It was distributed last week, Mr. President. Therefore, um, may we ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure and proceed with the roll call vote. Secretary will read the title of the measure and uh, proceed with the roll call vote. House Bill Number 5437, an act extending the availability of the 2019 appropriations to December 31, 2020, amending for the purpose Section 65 of the General Provisions of the Republic Act Number 11260, the General Appropriations Act of Fiscal Year 2019. Roll call vote, the Honorable Senators Angara, Binay, Cayetano, De Lima, De La Rosa, Drilon, Gachalian, Go, Gordon, Ontiveros, Lacson, Lapid, Marcos, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Pimentel, Po, Recto, Revilla, Tolentino, Villanueva, Villar, Zubiri, Senate President Toto III. With 19 affirmative votes, no negative votes, no abstention, House Bill 5437 is approved on third reading. Majority Leader. Oh, yes, Senator Recto is recognized. President Pro Temp. Mr. President, may I be recognized for an explanation of vote? Yes, yeah, Senator Recto is recognized. Uh, very brief, Mr. President. This bill is more about giving the government the chance to accelerate actual spending and less about giving more time for them to do it. It is meant to turbocharge spending and not simply extend the period for it to continue with its current sluggish pace. Because if the velocity and volume of disbursement will remain as is during the extended period, then at the end, it will not make much of a difference at all. This is like a basketball game, which has gone into overtime, of which the goal of the team behind is to score and not to waste time by simply passing the ball around. And the same is true in overcoming deficits, whether in games or in national expenditures. I frame the challenge this way more on the process of spending than on the period to do it. Because if government is hard-pressed in spending this much money within a year, then what gives it the confidence to spend about one and a half years worth of money within the same year? If it cannot spend one GAA within a year, then how much more for 1.5 GAA within the same period? If we're making their plate fuller, what should be done so they will not suffer from budgetary indigestion? It has to make adjustments of the legal kind because a business as usual mode will only yield more of the same results. 
I emphasize the legal variety of accelerated disbursement because breakneck spending should not be at the expense of breaking laws. In the panic to spend, agencies should not resort to and DBM must not countenance the usual recipes in the almanac of fake spending, like transferring the procurement to another agency, such as the DBM Procurement Service or the PITC, to force the illusion that an allotment has been obligated. This kind of pass a load type <coughs> of obligation merely extends <coughs> the validity of fund and does not give it any value in terms of service provided or goods procured. This violates the taxpayer's trust, taxpayers who have been assured again and again that money taken from them in cash will be returned to them in kind as fast as they had been collected. Mr. President, hindi rin po dapat na basta lang masabi na nagasta ang pera ay gagamitin na lang sa walang mga katuturan na planning, workshop, seminars, meetings sa mga hotel, resort o privado mga restaurant. Activities such as these are not excursions to see new sites, but should be activities to learn new things. Let us not be tempted by the low-hanging fruits from the poisonous tree. This can be avoided if use of the carryover funds will be attended by the highest transparency. This would require constant disclosure of fund releases. This will also entail the declaration from the onset of important baseline information, such as the amount of available funds. A congressional oversight is likewise needed so that funding duplication will be avoided and to ensure that activities that the DBM might green light for funding are indeed covered by authorized appropriations and not a fruit of their discretionary powers. Mr. President, I vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Recto, Major, uh, the Minority Leader, Senator Drelon is recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. We just want to put on record that uh, the uh, bill that we, that the measure that we approve, which is extending the uh, 2019 Appropriations Act, is already a bill and not just a joint resolution. And uh, this is because of the decision in uh, the case of Ang Nars uh, party list. And so henceforth, uh, we note this uh, procedure adopted by the, uh, by, 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 by the chamber. And henceforth, we will not be adopting joint resolutions anymore, even if we maintain the view that joint resolutions has the force and effect of law, but we have to recognize the decision of the Supreme Court. Thank you, Mr. President. But you will have to agree with the chair, uh, uh, thinking that uh, a joint resolution is a joint resolution expressing the sense of Congress. Uh, the, the it might the not have the it might not have the force of law according to the Supreme Court, but it will have the it will still be the expression of Congress. Uh, certainly, Mr. President, we yes. agree with that. In fact, a joint resolution passed by both Congress need not have the approval of the president, and yes. uh, that should. Uh, 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 put on record the strong sense of both chambers of Congress on, um, the, on the matter treated in the joint resolution. Uh, it's just to, uh, uh, here to, here to uh, before we were adopting uh, joint resolutions concurred in by the President as uh, by way of, say, extending the uh, effectivity of the General Appropriations Act, but this time we have to pass a bill. That's uh, Mr. President. Agreed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minority Leader. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President will take up uh, very important matters today and uh, move to the bills for interpolation. I move that we resume consideration, Mr. President, of Senate Bill Number 1074. This is the uh, uh, syntax measure of our dear Sponsor, Senator Pia Cayetano. May we recognize Senator Cayetano, Mr. President, to sponsor the measure and to interpolate uh, the distinguished gentleman from Bulacan, Senator Joel Villanueva. All right, uh, let's approve the first motion uh, to consider uh, a Senate bill or House bill? Senate bill number a Senate bill, 1074. 1074. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is ordered. And then uh, we recognize uh, the sponsor, Senator Pia Caetano, and the uh, interpolator, Senator Joel Villaneva, gentleman from Bulacan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Majority Floor Leader. May I know if uh, 
a good sponsor would uh, yield to uh, some questions from uh, this uh, representation. Very happy to yield to questions and comments, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleague. Before I begin uh, my questions, uh, I'd like to place on record, Mr. President, that uh, this representation shares the noble objective of the uh, distinguished sponsor in promoting the health of uh, the Filipino people and in effectively discouraging the uh, overconsumption of products that are harmful, not only um, uh, to the health of individual users, but to the society in general. And so at the onset, I'd like to put on record that I'm in uh, full support of the noble intention of uh, the committee and the distinguished sponsor. Let me start um, asking Mr. President on e-cigarettes, Mr. President. Um, I think the million dollar question right now is with the current status, uh, ito po bang isig, ito po bang heated tobacco, ito po ba ay uh, illegal because uh, we have heard the president and uh, we have seen the news na uh, banning in public places ang paggamit nito at uh, in fact ipinauhuli na po ng pangulo ang sino mga gumagamit nito. What what is now the uh, the status Mr. President because I, I I raised this question because I think all of us would agree that uh, um, before we can uh, uh, implement or raise the taxes on this particular product perhaps we, we we might be enlightened first if whether or not this is legal or illegal, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, the short response to that, and I heard it directly from Executive Secretary Medel Dia last Thursday, and this is also confirmed by Yusek Carl, uh, is that there will be an EO that will be released um, clarifying uh, the issues that uh, His Honor is asking us. So until then, um, your Committee on Ways and Means deems it best to continue with the interpolation because until there is a ban that is binding upon all of us, then this product continues to be available in public and uh, the Filipino people's health is at risk and at the very least we should resolve the issue on taxation because taxation is a uh, tool in uh, reducing consumption and uh, an effective deterrent. And if the distinguished sponsor will be asked, uh, this is to regulate at uh, hindi ibaban itong uh, mga produkto na ito. Is that correct, uh, distinguished colleague? Well, hindi ko naman pwedeng pangunahan because I'm not with the executive, but uh, our understanding is yes, it's a, it's meant to be regulate, regulatory regulated. in nature. Okay, Reg to be regulated. Now, Mr. President, during the uh, committee deliberations, it was made uh, clear that chronic use of e-cigarettes is uh, harmful. Even um, the industry agreed uh, to this claim. And in light with this, may, may we get information from the good sponsor? How many, as of now, how many Filipinos have suffered from diseases caused by uh, e-cigarettes? If, if we have the data, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, um, before I answer that question directly, let's put on record that this is a new product in the market. And uh, even though it's been around maybe for a few years in other countries, apparently a few years also in our country, uh, it's only recently that the world has become conscious of the uh, possible harmful effects and uh, have then consequently um, medical uh, institutions have started documenting this. So even in the U.S., uh, nagdo double time po ang uh, um, C CDC? CDC, FDA in documenting it because um, we need to be we need to be re uh, responsible in our statement. In as much as I'm also a health advocate and uh, I can I can enumerate all the health hazards, uh, the documented case that we actually have in the Philippines is one. But it doesn't mean that there's more than, that that's the only one. Yes. Except that it has come to our attention now that uh, I think uh, if somebody is brought to, to an emergency facility and they are um, uh, manifesting certain symptoms, then I think the question is now asked, uh, what are you consuming? And then 
if they would answer E6, then it becomes parang high alert na sila dyan. Actually, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, that's my next uh, question. Perhaps if we could also, uh, if you could also provide us some data as to how many e-cigarette-induced uh, uh, diseases or perhaps deaths have uh, been recorded over uh, the past years. Uh, if we have uh, this, this, this particular uh, data in the Philippines or, 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 or perhaps in this region, Mr. President, um, I think there are some countries who have already uh, made their decision to, to ban this, uh, this uh, 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 items. For example, I think in, in India, and yesterday, Senator uh, Tolentino showed me a, 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 um, a um, bunch of research and data uh, coming from uh, uh, World Health Organization, and uh, I forgot the, uh, the, 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 the other hospital, I think from New York, that, that talks about the, the harmful effects of uh, e-cigarettes. Actually, Mr. President, um, Senator Tolentino is really the expert on this because <laughs> we, we sort of had a division of labor unintentionally where he really is the one who, who compiles all of these uh, recorded uh, um, data on, on deaths, on injuries. So I'm more than happy if he wants to um, join in. He's welcome. But of course, I'm the one, I'm the one uh, on the floor now. So if he doesn't volunteer... Um, I will I will read what I have, but I know he has a lot of data. And, and let me put on record that I was actually for 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 regu uh, uh, strictly regulating this uh, uh, these units, uh, Mr. President. But yesterday, I almost got tempted to uh, to vote uh, on on banning this uh, this uh, items because of Senator Tolentino. Mr. President, we'll, we'll listen um, to the distinguished anyway, sponsor. Anyway, let, yes, let me, um, let me put on record now. Um, first of all, uh, e-cigarettes contain a, a very highly addictive uh, substance, and that's, as, that's known as nicotine. So um, unless His Honor wants me to, to um, okay. go into detail on that, uh, I think that's, that's a given. That means that that's the direct health impact, uh, Mr. President. Well, nicotine in itself, uh, aside from being highly addictive, is... Um, linked to increased risk of heart attack and stroke. And then 56% um, are more likely to have a heart attack and 30% are more likely to have a stroke than non-users. Um, there is also conclusive evidence that in addition to nicotine, most e-cigarettes contain and emit numerous potential toxic substances. This is what I'd like to, um, this is what I'd like to elaborate on a little bit. Uh, during my two-day um, indoctrination, education in WHO, and another one day in uh, London. Um, this is what this is my main takeaway. There are numerous potential toxic substances, and that's why, if you are a health advocate, or if and more so if you are in the Department of Health, you need to err on the side of safety before you allow such a substance to be accessible to the public. And that is why there's a high clamor for ban, not just in our country, led by no less than Senator Tolentino, but already in place in other countries. Because they cannot, health, health, prof, health professionals and health experts cannot give us the clearance that there are not potentially toxic substances here. That's why I always say that, who knows, five years, 10 years, 50 years from now, these products would be tweaked and, and you will come up with a refined product that has very little or no, um, no risk. But for now, none of these advocates can say, we're good, we're safe. So that yeah. is the main problem. That, that's good that the distinguished sponsor made mention that uh, no one is actually claiming that it is good or safe. Um, because I, I remember um, encountering uh, an article that says, e-cigarette manufacturers claim that their market is the group of current adult smokers. One uh, contentious issue is that it may attract even the uh, young non-smokers to begin the habit. And in this light, uh, may we know from the distinguished sponsor con uh, if, if she's considering imposing a higher excise taxes on variants of e-cigarettes identified to be attracting the youth. For example, Mr. President, yung mga 
flavored the uh, isig, uh, Mr. President. Before I answer that, can I just quickly um, complete the list of uh, health issues related to, to finish my, my uh, response to his honor's question, just yes, to put it on please. record. So aside from what I mentioned, um, in addition, premature death from heart and lung disease, uh, trigger or worsen chronic diseases such as asthma, heart attack, bronchitis, and other respiratory problems. Long-term exposure may also lead to plaque deposit in arteries causing vascular inflammation and a hardening of the arteries, which can eventually lead to heart attack and strokes. Um, there are also 39 out of 51 e-cigarette brands that contain diacetyl, which causes popcorn lungs. Oh. Yung lungs na mukhang popcorn. <laughs> Uh, diacetyl is added to e-juice liquid to complement to complement flavors, and when inhaled, diacetyl causes bronchiolitis, obliterans, or scarring of the tiny air sacs in the lungs, which make you cough and feel short of breath. Okay, so having said that, I will answer His Honor's next question. Um, do uh, the question is, uh, is does the committee intend? to impose higher taxes um, to make it, yes, appealing to the youth, no? Yes. That is a question. Um, before I answer that question, uh, I also want to put on record that um, from all the readings I've done and the lectures I've sat through, I believe that it is also important to define who is the youth and who are the young. Because when we speak of minors, officially we all know that's below 18. However, a big chunk of those attracted are no longer minors because they've had their 18th birthday. But I, like many of our colleagues uh, who have had a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old, they suddenly do not become adults just because they had a birthday. Their lungs are suddenly not, um, their lungs do not suddenly become immune to this uh, um, very damaging health concerns just because they turn 19 or they turn 20. So there are, um, there are um, proposals by WHO uh, to include all the way up to 25 years old. And I, for one, adhere to that because there is scientific evidence that the brain continues to grow up to the age of 25. So if these young people will not be protected because they are no longer 18, they are 19, 20, or 21, then we will be exposing these young people to all the health hazards that I mentioned. So having said that, um, I'm just defining who are these youth that I, I as your chair, hope to protect. Um, yes, there is more danger, it appears, from the commingling of um, flavors. Danger because there's more experimenting and then danger because it's more attractive to the youth. Sabi nga po nung because isang... those who are not supposed to smoke will are actually be... Uh, enticed. enticed. And let me also go back to the young person that I was defining. I had a... You actually know this person, but um, <laughs> because I have not asked her permission, I will not mention her name. Uh, she is no longer a youth, by our, my, even by my definitions, already in her 30s. Uh, she, she is what she calls herself a social smoker and drinker. Napapa inom at napapa yosi when out lang with friends, which could be anywhere between mga once a week, ganon. Never, never smokes outside of that social environment with a few friends. So, nung narinig niya na, na mas healthy daw ang e-cigarettes, she shifted, she tried the e-cigarettes. And sobra niyang nagustuhan. And ang problem niya ngayon is, na addict na siya sa e-cigarettes. She never used to smoke at home. She never used to smoke in between work. And now, nag e cigarette daw siya as often as she, as often as possible. So, nahook siya ngayon dun sa isang sinasabi natin na less harmful. But the issue is, it would, she, was, she was not hooked on cigarettes at all before. And now, because of those flavors, na hook siya. And she is in her 30s. And that's what more po yung mga mas bata? And, and that's my point, Mr. President, distinguished colleague. Uh, how, how are we protecting these uh, uh, young people, yes. uh, Mr. President? And, and having said that, perhaps the next question I'd like to raise is, how are we doing when it comes to uh, regulating these uh, uh, e-cigarettes? If I recall, Mr. President, when we passed the... The tax, the tax measure uh, last Congress, there was a uh, provision there introduced by uh, no less than our Senate President Pro Tempore, Ralph Recto, na bawal sa minor itong, uh, itong uh, 
uh, e-cigarettes na ito, no, Mr. President. I I'm just wondering kasi marami po tayong nakikita, marami din tayong nakikilala na mga minors pero nakakaroon ng uh, access, access para ho dito, no? So, so how is... How, how are we doing when it comes to uh, regulating uh, e-cigarettes, Mr. Yes. President? So, um, so the question there is, do you ban or do you regulate uh, flavors? Um, in the earlier discussions we had and throughout the, the um, educational uh, um, exposure I had in WHO and other health experts, there really is a strong recommendation to ban flavors if at all, stick to tobacco and uh, menthol, which is common in cigarettes, menthol. If you don't like the tobacco taste, you get menthol. So that you address uh, the concern of cigarette smokers who want to shift or have shifted that they don't like the taste of tobacco. So you have one, menthol. But you don't want it to be any more exciting than that, Mr. President, because you open this Pandora's box of an exciting world for these young people. So they now have... Uh, brands that are the called... The Curiosity Crips in Yes. And unicorn flavor, uh, rainbow something. Ganun ho yung mga pangalan ng mga flavors, which is very attractive to the youth. But again, let me ex let me share an experience I had in London. Um, in this session where no less than the advocates for e-cigarette smoking in London were presenting to us. Okay? So sila po yung nagsasabing... Um, Maganda tong e-cigarettes kasi nakakatulong ito para mag-shift na ang mga smokers to e-cigarettes. Sila yung nagpe-present ha. One of the persons they brought along was the head of a uh, para siyang association of uh, e-cigarette users. So that's just his advocacy to explain how he has shifted. Uh, he has nothing to do with the industry. He is just a passionate uh, passionate about sharing his shift. So he's probably in his 40s. In explain niya, nag experimento daw. At first daw, duda siya, pero nung natry niya, parang okay. So he shifted to, I think, tobacco flavor e-cigarettes. But over time, because there were so many interesting flavors in the market, like uh, cheesecake, vanilla, cast strawberry custard, he started playing around with those flavors. And now he loves those flavors. He was very candidly telling us this thing. So for me, Sige, uh, as, hindi, hindi naman ho ako smoker, and of course, may karapatan siya to do what he wants. He's an adult. But that is the danger. This becomes a now very exciting product, promoted to the extent that um, it's, it's such an exciting world to live in. So it's so attractive to the youth. And now even for the adults, for me, ang take ko po doon is instead of just shifting away from cigarette, they're now, sabi niya sa amin, at any given time, he has all these flavors in his car, iba yung flavor. And um, it is not proven to be healthier for you, or healthy for you. So for me, hindi nakakatulong. Naka, mas madalas na ho siyang mag-vape, dahil nga yeah. lahat ng flavor hinahanap niya. That, that's why, Mr. President, distinguished colleague, I would uh, support any move to... to Yun, ban or highly regulate. Highly regulate, and perhaps uh, more ban taxes flavors. for... for, 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 for uh, flavored uh, e-cigarettes. Just to put on record, Juul sells four flavors, namely mint, tobacco, mango, and cream. While there are countless e-juice flavors available in the market, such as peppermint, coffee, candy, lemonade, etc. I mean, what's what's the uh, what's our uh, um, uh, what would be what would 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 prevent, for example, a, 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 a someone who would put in uh, addicting uh, ano ba tawag uh, <laughs> uh, uh, substance or flavor, substance yeah. Of flavor, marijuana, etc. Kung ano man, no? Uh, um, sa open, for, for instance, Mr. President. So, yun yung tanong natin, kaya we, we, we wanted to find out if we are uh, getting better and uh, effective uh, in uh, regulating e-cigarettes. Actually, Mr. President. Mr. President, sadly, my answer to that question is no, we are not getting better. Right now, as we speak, there is no regulatory agency looking over all of this. Why? Because members of the industry filed a TRO uh, against, w, uh, against FDA and uh, DOH to regulate. I understand that they had certain concerns about the uh, the regulatory um, arm, no? But at the end of the day, that's what 
that's, that's, that is the result. And during my hearings and consultations that we had, our office has been very open to hear and listen to all the concerns of everyone. Uh, they, one of their strong positions is that they should not be required to get a license to operate, and they should also not be required to have the certificate of product registration of the FDA, comparing themselves to cigarettes. Yeah. That's yeah. a long, I mean, I can, I can spend the whole day <laughs> explaining the, this problem, but the point is, how can you not regulate a, a product that is not healthy? That is the job of FDA and DOH, and that is the situation we are in right now. That, that's that's uh, another thing that I'd like to, to raise, Mr. President, because I was looking at the uh, committee report um, I'd like to ask the distinguished sponsor, why should the Food and Drug Administration alone regulate e-cigarettes when an interagency called the uh, Interagency Committee Tobacco or IACT regulates traditional or regular cigarette product? Mm. Since, uh, Mr. President, since uh, uh, package two uh, essentially treats e-cigarettes and regular cigarettes as equal, as manifested in its intent to impose equal level of excise tax, Mr. President, can't the uh, same interagency cover the regulation of e-cigarettes and just include the Food and Drug Administration in that uh, interagency uh, committee? Mr. President, first of all, I'd like to th thank the gentleman from Bulacan for asking me that question. That is my most favorite question to answer. Um, I have to give a little bit of background. As His Honor correctly pointed out, there is this uh, interagency um, that is headed by DTI. Yes. And uh, they were set up to oversee tobacco, to regulate tobacco consumption, which, in my humble opinion, and in the opinion of all the health advocates and the DOH and the previous FDA administrators, is wrong. You cannot have an agency that includes the tobacco industry regulate the consumption of a very or probably one of the most hazardous products in the world. You can police your own self. <laughs> I have not seen them do that. And you know what, Mr. President? We have, we asked, them for we have asked them for um, reports uh, of their meetings. They have not been able to give us reports for years. I have asked them for what, what, uh, what uh, interventions they have made to reduce the consumption of uh, the Filipino of, of uh, cigarette, wala po. And that is precisely why the framework for tobacco control has prohibited the, the, um, the, health, the health advocates and the health sector, uh, sorry, has prohibited the cigarette industries from participating in regulatory measures. We are a signatory of this framework and we <coughs> violate it to the teeth. And now we have a new industry, the e-cigarette industry, who are comparing themselves with the cigarette industry and saying, eh, bakit yung mas masama naming kapatid? Hindi nire-regulate ng FDA. Kami mas mabuting version kami niyan. Dapat wag din kami i-regulate. Well, we cannot correct a wrong with another wrong, Mr. So, President. So, um, uh, just uh, for the information of everyone, when was that interagency uh, created and by what law? I will get it, Mr. President, because I didn't have it. Under 9211, po, Mr. President, which is what law? 9211, it's a law. It's uh, RA 9211, Mr. President, Section 29, or the Tobacco Regulation Act form that, that formed the Interagency Committee, Tobacco, to have exclusive power and function to administer and implement the law. The uh, Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry chairs it, while the Secretary of the Department of Health sits as uh, the Vice uh, Chairperson, Mr. President. So the FDA technically is there. Sorry, Mr. Techni President. Technically, the, the FDA is there, Vice Chairman ng DOH. DOH lang po, oh, Mr. President. Oh, Hindi, under ng DOH and FDA, ang, uh, FDA. Eh. So that, technically, FDA is there. If I may, Mr. President, historically, because po ang head niyan is DTI, it is only this administration that has taken the lead in uh, 
taking the lead in, in protective measures when it comes to cigarette and e-cigarettes by virtue of that AO sa e-cigs. Wala ho akong inabot before. Kahit ano hong gawin. Let me, let me tell you the major intervention that happened during the term of uh, President Aquino. Um, this representation as chairman of the Committee on Health um, shepherded the passage of the FDA, the now FDA law, which strengthened the then BFAD law. And we made it very clear there that any product that is harmful will be covered with the intention of covering cigarettes. Fast forward, Mr. President, this representation and our minority floor leader eventually became uh, intervenors in the case that the industry filed against DOH and FDA to prevent FDA from exercising the same kind of regulatory powers. And that TRO is still existing and hovering over us. So to put into context, kasi ho, dun sa ating um, uh, caucus na, na pag-usapan natin na ano ho ba yung intention talaga ni Presidente, Yung context po nung pagsabi niyang magbaban, kasama dun din yung kanyang disgust at kabwisitan dahil lagi ho tayong nati-TRO. Twice na nati-TRO ang FDA for this reason, for the same similar products. One was for cigarettes and one was for the e-cigarettes. So if uh, we feel strong about uh, 9211 being wrong, why don't you file a law repealing it? Actually, Mr. President, uh, when I mentioned yesterday that I have a bill, it will be very clear in that bill. I have two bills, actually, that I just need to finalize. One is to regulate e cigs as we discussed yesterday, and the other one is amendments to 9211, so that these mm. two products, both cigarettes and e-cigarettes, will finally be buried under the agency where they belong. And I'm hoping for the support of our honorable members I, because I cannot fathom how we can put it under any other agency that has no uh, training and no expertise when it comes to health. Kung pinag-uusapan naman po e trade, okay naman sa DTI. Kung pinag-uusapan naman po e raising taxes, okay naman sa DOF. But it, when it comes to health, it should be under the DOH and FDA. Thank All you. Right. Proceed, Thank you, proceed. Mr. President. I, I, I will definitely uh, support that uh, 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 measure, Mr. President, uh, when it comes uh, here in the plenary. And uh, I'd like to thank our distinguished sponsor for uh, clearly explaining the, uh, the details of what, what happened. And uh, Thank I certainly you for agree. asking the question. I certainly agree with the uh, distinguished sponsor. Now let me go, Mr. President, to the uh, next part of uh, this interpolation, which is uh, the, the excise tax on uh, alcohol products. Oh, Mr. President, can you show that? Mr. President, uh, uh, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I want to make sure that I totally understand uh, the, 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 this, uh, this particular measure. If you talk about types of excise tax. There are three types, right? Um, specific tax, which is uh, based on uh, quantity or volume. At pag may specific tax, may unitary and dual. Um, second is ad valorem, which is based on value. And third is mixed. Nandiyan po sa, sa gitna po natin, ito pong uh, alcohol type, yung current status, yung uh, house bill, and of course the Senate uh, version, ito pong uh, committee report, Mr. President. Now, we impose mixed type of uh, excise tax on distilled uh, products. Um, they face both uh, specific tax and ad valorem tax. Can the good sponsor uh, uh, explain uh, bakit po ganito yung ating, uh, ating uh, pinopropose? Uh, just to clarify, the, di the difference between the, the categories, is that the question? Why some have specific and... Uh, I, I, I already, act actually, Mr. President, I already understand what's the difference between specific tax, ad valorem, uh, and why? The why? It's just that my question now is that why are we uh, implementing or uh, suggesting in this uh, uh, Senate Bill 1074 a mixed uh, type of... Uh, uh, of taxing itong uh, distilled spirits, Mr. President. Yes. Okay. First of all, Mr. President, um, 
in the current uh, law, under the current law, the practice is the same. We yes. Have, we have an ad valorem tax and a specific tax. And the reason why we are continuing it is because it it works in terms of tar yes. in terms of reaching our objectives. When we have an ad valorem tax, that is based on the price. Therefore, um, across the board, 20% is the rate uh, that we have proposed. So whether you have a, a, a cheap product like a 40 peso, the cheapest is gin bilog, uh, 40 pesos. Uh, ang, ang retail price niya comes out to like 44 pesos. Um, that already has a 20%. Kung yung product mo naman is ma mamahalin na whiskey, uh, to, let's say 1,000 pesos, 20% then, so 1,200. So um, they both get tax because, uh, because, based on their price, okay? Oh, malaki po yung price range. Am I correct, yes, Mr. President? Yes, yes. Uh, that's why products yun. falling under this category, malaki yung price. So yan ang best way to, to do it. Uh, gawin nating mix, specific tax in uh, ad valorem. Now, in line no, with... Sorry, let me, let me just clarify that. The percentage takes care of the price difference. Yun yung ad yes. valorem. The specific tax is there because we want to address the alcohol content. So those with those with higher alcohol content technically would end up be being taxed more. And that is where the health deterrent component comes in. Kung mataas yung alcohol content nun, medyo nagmamahal yung produkto. Kasi nga, Part of our job is to make it prohibitive. Medyo masakit sa bulsa. Totoo ho yun. Yun yung, yun yung objective natin. And that is done in all other countries in the world that want to use taxation as a deterrent. I, I agree, uh, Mr. President. Now, can, can, can we go now to fermented uh, liquor? Yes. It's specific and uh, dual. Ang, uh, um, can you go back to the... Slide. Specific and dual, ho, no? Yung, uh, without, without any reforms. But now, we are doing with a specific uh, tax uh, based on quantity or volume, and then we're moving from dual to unitary, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President, that may, is correct. Do you know the, the basis for that, Mr. Yeah. President? Well, first of all, um, the uh, alcohol content for um, beer is roughly the same hindi naman hindi kan hindi kay sing extreme ng distilled where you you know from from whiskies to gin to rums talagang alaki nung differences per product and uh, we need to to address this per proof liter when it comes to beer they're more or less the same so there was no need to do this it's also for simplicity Agreed. and if the concern would be price differentials between, um, I mean, the pricing between imported and local. We have to remember that there is still VAT and customs duties. So, yung imported beer products, hindi naman didikit yung presyo kasi may, may VAT naman lahat yan and meron pang customs duties. Okay, I, I, I agree also. Now, Mr. President, if we look at uh, the wines. Yes. Uh, this time, Mr. President. Uh, the, the house version actually uh, uh, thought that it should also fall under, I mean, the same the same category as the distilled, uh, because perhaps they are in the same category. The price range also is uh, almost the same. The alcohol content, uh, Mr. President, varies. So my my question now, Mr. President, is why why are we? Uh, uh, proposing that instead of mix, a specific, a specific and unitary kind of excise tax, Mr. President. Because if you look at the, the volume and the, the collection that we will uh, be collecting, Mr. President, I'm sure it will be higher if we, if we impose a, a mix uh, type of uh, excise tax, Mr. President. Yeah. Mr. President, um, as I mentioned during our caucus, uh, your chairman has also taken time to understand the differences and uh, these are judgment calls that we made and in this particular case it was simplicity that was the governing the basis for the decision um, because wines uh, are a very very small percent of the market parang nasa 1% lang halo siya ng buong market natin we just deemed it uh, upon DFA, DOF's recommendation uh, they asked us to keep it simple with just one tax. Okay. So, kung swapangan lang naman, talagang mas mataas po. Thank you for pointing that out. Yung, ano, yung rate ng, uh, 
uh, ng House. Pero in this case, simplicity naman po yung hinabol natin. Y yes, Mr. President, I agree with, with simplicity. But also, it's not just uh, simplicity, Mr. President. But I think if you look at the distilled spirits and the wines, you have the sparkling wines, for instance. Uh, right now, yung sparkling wines, pagka less than 500 pesos, ayan, uh, 328 pesos lang. And uh, uh, when if, if we pass this measure, 600 pesos lang, Mr. President. Pero pag uh, greater than uh, 500 pesos, 600 pesos pa rin, Mr. President. So, ang point ko lang, Mr. President, I think it's a question of whether simplicity or fairness. Because if we are uh, to, to talk about uh, uh, collecting more, I think it is it is better, in, in my personal opinion, it would be better to, to implement the same with the distilled spirits, which is a mix uh, kind of uh, uh, taxing our, uh, I mean, uh, uh, implementing the excise tax, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, the observation of His Honor does not um, escape uh, this representation. We are aware. And uh, napasmile niyo po si Yusek Carl. Okay lang naman daw na madagdagan ng collection nila. Ang akin lang naman po, I was just very conscious of the fact that all throughout all these measures, I was weighing the need for collection of taxes, the health deterrent, and simplicity. In the case of wine, that was my final decision. But that is the one area that I am more. I am even more open. In in as much as I said, I'm open to all the suggestions. That's, that's very open. Po tayo that's dyan. good enough for me, Mr. President. Oh. That the sponsor is open to that idea. Lagi because, naman pong open. Because, because Mr. President, we also got the chance to talk to our friends from DOF, mm -hmm. and they were saying that they they can actually uh, 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 they're actually agreeable to that idea. Uh, no problem, idea, Mr. President. Mr. President. Wala, hindi naman una katatak yung signature ko sa bawat numero jan. But, but Lahat perhaps, Mr. President, so that. Uh, uh, our colleagues will not get me wrong. I'm just talking about consistency. And I'm just talking about uh, not just simplicity, but also fairness, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, um, let me let me also ask about uh, about our objective, Mr. President, in uh, promoting a tax structure that better responds to the health objectives of the bill. Um, it is clear to me, Mr. President, that uh, excessive blood alcohol concentration exposes one to countless alcohol attributable diseases and impairs one's judgment in physical faculties resulting in accidents and crimes, which I think the distinguished sponsor uh, mentioned in her uh, sponsorship speech. Hence, uh, we hope to be enlightened, Mr. President, whether the tax structure and rates that the uh, committee report adopts effectively targets uh, this risk. So let me ask Mr. President, uh, distinguished colleague, among the different alcoholic drinks, uh, for example, uh, distilled spirits, fermented liquors, and wines, may we know which type of product accounts for the largest share of consumption in terms of pure alcohol? Sorry, can you just repeat that last question? What the Among the different alcoholic uh, drinks, uh, Mr. President, yes, yes. which type of product? Um, Consumption. Uh, yes, uh, in terms of uh, pure alcohol, Mr. President, distilled spirits, fermented liquors, and uh, liquors and wines. No, if his honor is, if the question is which product is consumed, what product is consumed product at account, the highest amount of alcohol, that would definitely be distilled. Distilled. But if you're asking the overall consumption of the Filipino people, that would be beer. But the, but the per bottle uh, percentage of alcohol in beer is lower okay. than distilled. Yeah, uh, that's correct, Mr. President, and I agree that the, uh, when it, in, in terms of consumption in uh, pure alcohol, it's the distilled. Uh, am I correct, Mr. President? Because based on BIR, Mr. President, BIR data, the Philippines had 1.825 billion liters of fermented liquor products and 441.15 million proof liters of distilled spirits in 2017. Uh, it is interesting to note, Mr. President, uh, that considering beers usually have 5% alcohol content, while distilled spirits contain approximately 40% alcohol, uh, gaya po nung binanggit ng ating distinguished uh, sponsor uh, yesterday doon po sa lounge, yung one shot of uh, distilled spirits is 
already equivalent to, I think, one bottle of beer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, thus, while fermented liquors comprise the largest volume among all alcoholic beverages, they in fact account for a smaller share in terms of pure alcohol intake of an average Filipino drinker. Another data that I'd like to share and uh, just to spread on the record, Mr. President, the Global Status Report on Alcohol and Health by the World Health Organization confirms this. An average Filipino drinker, aged 15 years old and above, consumed an estimated 19.9 liters of pure alcohol in 2016 po ito, Mr. President. And of this total pure alcohol intake, fermented liquors account for only about one-fourth, a 27%, while distilled spirits account for almost three-fourth at 72%. Wine products is uh, comprised, uh, wine, wine products comprise the uh, remaining uh, 1%, Mr. President. And that's why, Mr. President, I'd like to ask, given the fact, uh, I mean, Mr. President, would, would the good sponsor have information as to um, why distilled spirits constitute the largest pure alcohol consumption of Filipino drinkers? And why is it the case na yung mga studies na nababasa po natin for the Philippines when it is not the case uh, for most ASEAN countries? Uh, parang naguguluhan po ako dito sa data na ito and I just want to be clarified, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, let me remind our colleagues when I delivered my sponsorship speech, sabi ko nga, Sad to say, proud ako na meron tayong Manny Pacquiao na champion. Pero champion din tayo sa inuman. <laughs> we, top, we top the world record when it comes to alcohol consumption. And that is because the price of our alcohol is cheaper in this country. I have friends who randomly, they know that this is my work, and they randomly send me prices of beer and other alcoholic alcohol beverages in other parts of the world. Ang baba talaga ng, ng ano natin. Ama. So that, that is the reason. And distilled products are also very, very, very cheap. I, I gave the representation a number of times already. One shot of the cheapest um, commercially produced uh, uh, gin is uh, currently at four pesos and something centavos. And with my proposed taxation, it becomes six pesos and something per shot. Six pesos! Ang mura -mura, you cannot get drunk that cheap in other parts of the world. Uh, that that we, are, we are similarly situated. I'm not talking about the poorest of the poor countries. No, I'm talking about middle-income countries like the Philippines. And that is why I stand by my higher rates precisely because of that sad reality. It is very cheap. Tatlong, tatlong shot ng gin po, uh, lasing ng isang teenager. Tatlong shot, 20 pesos. 20 pesos lang. Mr. President, uh, please don't get me I actually agree with you, Mr. President. It's just that I feel na we can stretch more doon po sa distilled spirits dahil sila yung mas nakakabigay ng uh, masamang epekto, Mr. President. Again, again, let me give another, another uh, data, Mr. President, from World Health Organization. Distilled spirits are the largest contributor to pure alcohol consumption of Filipino drinkers. Their consumption is too high to the point that such volume of alcohol, 14 liters from distilled spirits, is the largest, highest, Mr. President, highest recorded among ASEAN countries. Today, in ASEAN, only Philippines, Myanmar, and Thailand record higher portion of alcohol from distilled spirits than from beer. Now, if you look at the data from international wine and spirit research, the Philippine uh, gin market, which is the largest gin market in the world, as already mentioned by, by our distinguished colleague, actually grew by 8% in 2018, despite global decline in the popularity of gin. Now, the same report predicts that the Philippines' alcohol market will continue to grow up to 2023 from constituting... This is... Uh, uh, a concern, Mr. President, from constituting 1.1% of the global consumption in 2018, it is predicted to constitute 1.4% of global consumption in 2023. Again, my question, Mr. President, meron ba tayong 
explanation bakit po ganito and perhaps is it culture is it because of accessibility mr president um mr president his honor is correct um culture accessibility habits uh they all contribute to to uh this uh culture and habit of drinking that's exactly what it is mr president um sabi nga nila you know uh i'll, I'll give I'll, I'll go back to e-cigarettes and smoking as my example no uh, when I was in London, precisely to study the, uh, what, what the effects of e-cigarettes would be, it was pointed out to us that the reason why um, England has taken a more uh, permissive approach to e-cigarettes, it's still highly regulated, pero parang, parang medyo pinupush talaga nila as a, as a switch no, for cigarettes, is because um, cigarette has no lo is no longer attractive to the youth. That is because pag nag naglalakad ang youth, Naglalakad, going to school, in school, um, they have a lot of health um, promotions and um, the whole country has bought into selling cigarettes as not a cool thing. So when a young person, a child, looks at an older person smoking, hindi siya naiingget, hindi siya aspirational, nakakadiri siya. That's why hindi sila masyadong takot na mag-shift ang bata sa e-cigarettes. That is not the case in the Philippines because we do not have those protective measures in place to prevent the youth from smoking. So I'm just using that as a parallel example to drinking. Pag naglakad ang bata sa kanyang barangay, ano yung nakikita niya sa kanto-kanto? Inuman. Common yun. Oy, tawagin mo na tatay mo. Umuwi na siya. Tapos we have statistics that show there's a lot, there's an increase in domestic violence after drinking. So it is part of the culture and it is something that cannot be solved by tax alone naman po talaga. Uh, we need to um, really have this intervention on the social side. But if I may just, uh, if His Honor has other questions on this, please proceed because otherwise I will explain what your committee has done to address that, that uh, high intake of, in distilled. particular, sa distilled. Yes, uh, just, just, just to... To, uh, to, ra to raise something also, Mr. President, because I'm almost convinced, Mr. President, that we are not taxing, or if, if you look at the committee report, it is not enough that we are only taxing this much for distilled uh, spirits, Mr. President. Given the fact that distilled uh, spirits are responsible for the larger source of alcohol intake of an average Filipino drinker. Uh, now, Mr. President, um, May we know from the good sponsor if it is, uh, is it logical, Mr. President, to uh, infer that distilled spirits carry a bigger responsibility or burden in terms of the health and social costs associated with over drinking in the country? Um, Mr. President, I have two responses. I have a comprehensive response to that, uh, but hopefully very short. In terms of health risk, definitely uh, distilled spirits have a very, very uh, detrimental effect on health. That is very clear because of the higher volume. We don't need to uh, belabor that point. However, socially in the Philippines, um, it is aspirational to be a beer drinker. So it, is, it would be very irresponsible for this representation to say, that we should only focus on distilled because there are still a lot of detriment. There, there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. Let me go back to that. Um, I myself was surprised. My, your good friend, my brother, was surprised when I told him that in our hearing, the health expert debunked what we all believe that a glass of red wine a day is healthy. Dinibang po nila yon. Sabi ko talaga, kasi marami talaga po sa ating naniniwala na one a day, sabi pa nga iba, two. That has been debunked. So there is no safe level of alcohol. So if, you were, if we will distinguish, if we will pull out only one, uh, it, would not be, it would not be responsible for this representation to just focus on distilled. However, if I may, if I may point out at this time, um, a careful perusal of the committee report will show that the burden of taxation in my proposal has shifted to distilled. Currently, the taxation burden for fermented or for beer is at 
that is more or less commensurate to the sales or the consumption, which is 75% of the market. So 75% of the alcohol market is beer, and the taxation that is carried by fermented is 73. So hindi Under the proposal of this representation, the tax burden of fermented goes down to 67%, and distilled goes up. To, 20, to 31 percent from 24. So we have already made those the intervention that His Honor was uh, mentioning in terms of uh, increasing bo both. To be sure, all categories were increased for the record, but for distilled, medyo bumigat pangahu don. And in fact, I will be candid and put on record that um, industry from all sides have, have expressed their concern for those rates. But um, uh, this representation doesn't uh, claim to be perfect in, in uh, her analysis, pero it did undergo uh, lengthy studies to come up with this, um, these rates, wherein we tax the different categories in the best way we feel uh, would uh, address the health issues and uh, spread out the burden among the industries. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleague. But let me also point out uh, one, I am not a drinker. I am, I, I don't, I, I don't, uh, I, I never had beer in my entire life, uh, Mr. President. I, I had the chance to, 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 to drink uh, uh, red wine, Mr. President, upon the request of Senator Angara and Senator Subiri. <laughs> um, number two, Mr. President, I am not trying to single, single out distilled uh, spirits. Again, let me go back, uh, Mr. President, to what I'm trying to point out since uh, the beginning of my interpolation on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, alcohol products. Uh, more than simplicity, Mr. President, is fairness, Mr. President, because it is difficult and unsafe for our, uh, there's a study, it's difficult and unsafe for, for, for our liver to process alcohol beyond the standard drink level as being espoused by the, the Department of Health. It's defined as 12 ounce of beer or 1.5 ounce of distilled spirits per hour. I don't know if this is applicable to some of our colleagues, but this is the uh, standard drink level. The proportion just shows the huge alcohol concentration in distilled spirits, Mr. President, and how relatively easy breaching the standard drink level uh, is when consuming this product. And that's why uh, my question to the good sponsor uh, if she believes that the, 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 the product responsible for almost three-fourths three -fourths of alcohol consumption should be held equally responsible for all the social costs of uh, drinking as compared to the product that accounts for only one-fourth of alcohol intake. That's, that's, that's all I wanted to point out, Mr. President. Yes. Um, Mr. President, my response to that has to be a little bit more comprehensive because Although, the, although I am one with his honor in, in acknowledging a basic fact that the alcohol content of distilled products is higher and therefore it is unhealthy, period. We have no debate there. However, the reality is we have more beer drinkers in the country. We have a lot of beer drinkers. And in terms of numbers, In terms of numbers, there are more beer drinkers, so it would be irresponsible for your committee to just uh, focus on one uh, category and not the other, and not look at the bigger picture. I totally appreciate where his honor is coming from, but the burden that this, your chairman carries is to spread it out. And like I said, we have already increased the burden of the distilled more than it currently is under this current regime. So it would be easy for me to say, bring it on. Uh, kindly, I have yet to hear anyone say, and I thank the gentleman for sharing my advocacy to increase. However, I am mindful of the concern that uh, natataasan din po ang, uh, ang, uh, ang ibang colleagues natin. And it's my job to spread it out. Kumbaga, hindi naman kay singhirap yata yung trabaho ko kapareho ni uh, chairman ng Committee on Finance, dahil ilang committees yun, ito naman eh, ilang categories lang naman, pero it is still a burden that I carry, how to spread it out. And since His Honor uh, mentioned uh, simplicity versus fairness again, I just want to put on record that 
when it comes to wine, um, just to make it clear for the record, no, because uh, history will will only have uh, journals to refer to my explanation. Hindi naman po. Uh, let me correct myself if it, I made it appear that simplicity was my only concern in the uh, finalization of the wine rates. Hindi naman because the fact that um, the fact that there is that specific uh, tax would still distinguish be between um, different price points. Tataas at tataas pa rin yung mahal at yung imported. Wala lang nung percentage na kapareho ng house. So, Fair pareho enough. naman ho yung patutunguhan, medyo mas matindi lang yung sa kanila. Again, I'm open, but I wanted to put on record that it was not based on simplicity alone. I, yes, fe I, I, I felt it was plus, plus, Mr. President, it is a prohibitive product already because it is not uh, something that the average young person, uh, youth, and would drink and that's why in terms of deterrent, hindi ho tayo nag-focus doon. Yun lang naman. But I think also, Mr. President, that we both agree a while ago that you are open to... Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, that doesn't, kind of, that okay. doesn't change my... Yes. Uh, hindi ko binabawi yung yes, openness Otherwise, ko. Mr. President, hindi. I go back to that. No, no, no. no. Hindi ko <laughs> binabawi. Kiniclear ko lang for the record na, yes. na it I wasn't simplicity alone that was yes. the basis. Yes, Mr. President, you made mention about uh, the, 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 the consumption of... Uh, beers in the country. Maybe may, may we know how many beer drinkers we have in the country right now and how many uh, are, are, are uh, distilled drinkers. Would, would the um, DOF is checking the figures for me? Would His Honor like to proceed to another yeah. question sure. while uh, we're waiting for the figures? Ju just to uh, uh, emphasize, Mr. President, what we are, are trying to uh, drive at. Because distilled spirits still, record will show, the largest contributor to pure alcohol consumption of Filipinos. Their consumption is too high to the point that such volume of alcohol, 14 liters, from distilled spirits is the highest recorded among ASEAN countries. Um, today, Mr. President, only Philippines, Myanmar, and Thailand record higher portion of alcohol from distilled spirits um, than from beer. And coincidentally, they also consume more total alcohol too. Uh, World Health Organization data also shows that in ASEAN, total pure alcohol intake in countries where distilled spirits is the most common alcohol of choice, is 60% higher in other countries where beer is the top choice. 20.9 liters versus 12.9 liters of alcohol, respectively. Now, just, I'm just sharing this, Mr. President, just to remain true to our health objectives. We as the government, I believe, should, should be keen on identifying which products cause the health problems we are trying to address and exert proportionate efforts to reduce uh, their uh, con consumption, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, at, at present, if, if we still don't have the data, Actually, can, Mr. can I... Actually, Mr. President, let I, me put on record okay. the data I have. The data, the data that I have right now is in terms of the volume. So... So, okay. Mr. President, if we talk about the volume at present, which alcoholic... Um, product are we taxing more heavily per volume of alcohol content? It's still, it's still beer, Mr. President. It's still beer. And that beer. is precisely the reason for the recommendation of this committee to shift some of that burden to distill because this representation recognizes the same uh, has the same concern and uh, observation that his honor has. Uh, nga ho, Mr. President, eh, again, I'm not trying to single out this still. Pareho ko silang gustong itax, Mr. President. Uh, Please don't get me wrong. It's just that I think uh, it is important that ma nakita natin itong uh, may discuss po natin. I'm glad that distinguished uh, sponsor is open to this uh, idea because may, 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 may I know, Mr. President, if uh, the distinguished sponsor would also have any information on the tax per alcohol content prior to the passage. And... Again, I, I'm not alluding to the sponsor as to why this happened in, uh, in, in passing of a sin tax law in 2013. Um, if to begin with, Mr. President, the equivalent tax per alcohol content is higher for fermented liquor than distilled spirits as it is now. So uh, does the good uh, sponsor have information as to why our alcohol excise tax structure has been designed uh, 
uh, this way? Because are we taxing distilled uh, spirits lower than beers because the health and social costs associated with it is lower? Mr. President, obviously, uh, dinatnan ko itong yeah. bill na, gan na itong current na batas natin, no? And uh, I, I was very supportive during the deliberations in uh, 2012 because at that point, uh, it had been a very long time before since uh, the, there was any increase whatsoever. So I, I believe, if I, if I recall correctly, the attitude of even the health advocates was they were happy that there was an increase in taxation. So what your, what your chairman of the committee has done is, like I said, increased further the share of the distilled products. Is it enough? No. In fact, uh, I, I need to put on record my jubilation that I have somebody interpolating me that <laughs> shares my concern that our tax rates are very low. And just like you, hindi ko naman po intention na na manira ng industriya, na mawala ng trabaho yung mga nagtatrabaho. Hindi po yun. Pero trabaho ko to look at the bigger picture and to ensure that while we allow unhealthy products to be available in the market, we are doing the proper interventions thank, thank, to thank. make it less accessible to the most vulnerable and to also just make it not a very easily accessible commodity like it is in other countries. It it saddens me that in our journey towards becoming an upper middle class economy, things like taxation of sin products are being treated um, in not in the same manner. In other words, if you go to other middle income countries and upper middle income countries, standard yan, they make these products inaccessible to the youth. They're expensive, cigarettes, uh, alcoholic products sa atin, Hindi po tayo doon. Mm. So, yun, the burden that I, I will just have to repeat that the burden that your chair carries is how to distribute this, um, this burden. Kasi hindi naman po talaga pwedeng one industry lang ang matax. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. President. And I admire and uh, have very high regard to our distinguished sponsor, especially for understanding where this representation is uh, uh, coming from. And uh, I just would like to again reiterate, uh, given that health is at the core of the objective of this legislation, to minimize illness, minimize deaths, accidents, and uh, uh, violent acts associated with alcohol consumption, perhaps it is uh, important for, for us in, in the chamber to discuss and uh, uh, talk about these issues on the intent behind the disparity in excise taxes levied uh, per volume of alcohol across the different products, Mr. President. So my, my, my next question, perhaps, Mr. President, is how, how, how will this uh, SB10... Mr. President, I'm sorry. If, if His Honor would allow, can I just add a response before you move sure, into please, another please, point? Please, please. Um, I, I was just asking uh, DOF through you, Sec. Carl, um, what is the Rational. practice in other countries in terms of uh, the tax burden or in terms of uh, the, the numbers that his honor is showing. And there is very strong finding that um, the trend now because uh, uh, the health advocates and the awareness and the, the institutions that um, are handling uh, tobacco and alcohol control in other countries are very strong and have seen a lot of positive outcome, it is now not as um, acceptable to drink and get drunk. So the tendency now is to drink, for, to drink socially. And that tends to happen with either expensive distilled products or fermented products like beer. And that's why hindi po mabitawan basta-basta ang taxation ng beer because for the youth, it is aspirational, it is cool to be holding a bottle of beer. And that's why hindi ho natin yan pwedeng sabihin na focus lang tayo sa distilled because of the fact that his honors mentioned. Fact naman po talaga yun, yung, heart, yung uh, high, high volume, pero meron ding social component kung bakit kailangan binabantayin din natin ang presyo ng beer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Before I, I leave this, uh, this uh, particular issue, as we have pointed out uh, earlier, Mr. President, distilled spirits contribute the uh, lion's share of alcohol consumption, yet uh, we collect uh, more revenues from uh, fermented liquor products. This means that uh, 
for the funds the government was able to generate the past years, producers of distilled spirits shared a lower contribution to the universal health care. Um, it's, it's very hard, Mr. President, to uh, reconcile uh, this uh, seeming irony, Mr. President. Uh, may, may we know from the distinguished sponsor how will the uh, proposed uh, bill uh, changes this uh, uh, tax uh, burden? What will uh, perhaps yes. be the share of fermented products compared to the distilled spirits um, after this uh, proposal uh, takes effect? Yes, Mr. President, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, for, uh, to repeat the, the figures, uh, currently the share of fermented products currently is 73% and the share uh, of uh, distilled products is 24 and it's, it's less than 1% uh, left for others. So, sorry, so Mr. President, currently, 73 for? Currently, 73% currently is fermented. 73.9% okay. is fermented, and distilled is 25.2%. Okay. That is current. Under... Under the committee report, Mr. President, the excise tax share for fermented goes down to 67.9, so that's a reduction of about 6%. Yeah. And uh, the share of distilled goes up 31. to 31.2%. That's correct. Yes. Uh, so my, 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 my figures are correct. And, and for wine and others would be 0.9. Yes, barely 1%, yeah. Mr. President. It and would reach 1% if we... Uh, yes, uh, sure. Agree with the mixed uh, no excise problem, tax, Mr. Mr. President. President. <laughs> um, but also, just to put on record, um, again, no disagreement with the uh, uh, concerns and conclusions that His Honor has reached. But um, in terms of uh, comparative prices of popular beers across ASEAN, um, the Philippines is third to the lowest. Uh, only Vietnam and Cambodia are lower than the Philippines in ASEAN. And with what has been criticized as my very high rates, Mr. President, we are still third. We never even improved. We never even, uh, uh, the, the next Lao, Mr. President, Lao, even, sorry to yeah. put it this way, but cares about the liver of their, their citizens more than we do, if, if, I, if I can put it that way, because the figures of Lao are still higher than ours, even with the increase of rates that uh, the committee has uh, proposed. Yeah, just, just, just to uh, correct my, my, my staff here, uh, baligdad po yung uh, fermented and distilled, as already mentioned by uh, our uh, good sponsor. Well, Mr. President, distinguished colleague, uh, uh, I, I, just ra I just raised these questions, a uh, set of questions in this uh, particular uh, issue to help uh, our, our committee, this chamber, shape an alcohol excise tax structure that is uh, uh, more pro-health and one that will uh, fairly impose a higher tax burden to the product that is more responsible to the health concerns we are uh, trying to address and will likewise discourage uh, its consumption. Now let me go, Mr. President, to uh, another issue, Mr. President, on uh, 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 taking that objective, uh, another objective of this uh, committee, as uh, earlier mentioned, on uh, direct health targets of the bill. Mr. President, um, let me uh, ask a question that relates to the specific health targets of the bill. As we have been doing uh, for the past years, whenever a new um, tax measure is uh, being deliberated upon, we always ask about the specific measures of performance against uh, uh, which we will uh, later on assess the effectiveness of uh, the bill. This is similar, Mr. President, to what we have been doing here in the Senate where we assess budget in terms of budget utilization and uh, um, its physical uh, performance. For instance, uh, Mr. President, during I remember during the deliberation on the uh, tax reform for acceleration and inclusion, uh, train package one, the Department of Finance generated targets in relation to revenue, inflation, poverty alleviation, and spending. Now, similarly, during the uh, deliberations on the uh, syntax law of uh, 2013, the Department of Health also provide this, uh, pr provided us um, information on the potential benefits of the law, on the reduction in uh, smoking uh, prevalence, uh, especially of our young people. 
reduction in number of cigarettes consumed, reduction in tobacco-related expenditures, and reduction in economic burden of tobacco-related diseases, uh, to name a few. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, what is the estimated uh, um, price elasticity or uh, price sensitivity of demand for alcoholic uh, beverages? Alcohol in general, Mr. President, negative point two. Negative point two. Uh, Mr. President, using this elasticity, by how much will the volume of alcohol consumed by uh, Filipinos decline in 2020 under uh, uh, SB uh, 1074? Uh, similarly, Mr. President, by how much is the prevalence of alcohol drinkers expected to decline? We're just pulling out the chart, Mr. President. Because if I'm not mistaken, Mr. President, if you if if you made mention a while ago, point two, uh, elasticity, uh, it, it it means and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, it means the ten percent increase in price uh, would lead to about uh, two percent decrease in consumption. I I I, I, I think it's a, a fair uh, estimate. Is that correct, Mr. President? Um, just to lay the basis, yes. uh, in 2015, the well, let, let me start in 20, 2008, so we can see a historical uh, record, no? So between 2008 to 2013, there was a big spike from 26.9 to 48.2. This is the... Twen sorry, Mr. President, 26.9 to... 48.2. Okay. That's the consumption, Mr. President. No, Increasing the prevalence, consumption. prevalence. Prevalence, prevalence. Yeah, 48.2 prevalence. And then 2002-13, that's already when we had the new syntax law that increased the rates. Uh, there was a decline from 48.2 in 2015. It was recorded as 44.9. So it could see, we can see that there was a positive effect. Okay. But as the health advocates were saying, we need to continually adjust because there's purchasing power, there's inflation, etc. So you will start to see an increase in this chart uh, after 2015. And that is exactly why we are intervening now in the hope to, to bring this back into a downward trend. Okay. So if the bill is put into place, if uh, this honors uh, uh, version is uh, put into place, um, the rate we actually still have, because it's on an upward trend, is 46.62 in 2020. 46.62. 62. 62. So By upward 2020. Yeah, because as I said, it was on an upward trend, no? But then after that, it will go down, and this is per year, so I can just say 2020, 45.39. 2021, 44.86. The next year, 44.38, 43.94, and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm so sorry, Mr. President, I don't know if I, I, I get it wrong because uh, from 44.9 in 2015, our target by 2020 will be 46.62. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. President. No, because what I'm saying is, I, I, that's why I gave the, the, the background. After 2015, there was already an upward trend. Okay. So, pataas na po yan. And so, um, I, I don't have the actual figure, but the chart, the, 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 num the chart goes up. Okay. That's now, why by 2020, wala pang effect yung down. Kaya tumaas talaga yun. Kasi from 2015 onward, pataas na naman yung ating prevalence. Because of purchasing power. Uh, hindi ho pang matagalan yung mga rates natin eh. So, it becomes... It, even though you, you, we passed rates before, it becomes more accessible. That's so, why there's an upward trend so until parang, we pass a new law. 
Actually, Mr. President, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused because it keeps on going up despite, despite the, the syntax, despite the... Mr. Uh, President, the purchasing power of people hmm. increase over yes. time. And therefore, when you do not make adjustments to the tax, uh, to the tax rates on these sin products, it becomes okay. easier to consume. That's why I, the health advocates have always, and I've attended many hearings over the years, have always said that you, you have to be very conscious of the increase in population, the, the um, uh, purchasing power, buying power of the youth. Like, I, I know it's a fact that over the last five years, yung purchasing power ng youth natin tumaas just, just by virtue of the BPO industry alone. So yes. you'll see a lot of, and, and uh, we have recorded um, issues of a strong uptake in alcohol in those uh, areas of employment. So I'm, parang ganun ho yun. I'm glad you brought that up, yung uh, BPO industry na pinababagsak ngayon ng mga pogos, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, just to, uh, no, no, uh, I don't want to uh, take much of the time of our distinguished sponsor. I, I, we're, we're talking about uh, the, the, the price elasticity or price sensitivity of uh, demand and uh, your honor made mention about the 0.2 uh, elasticity as mentioned earlier by this representation and uh, please correct me if i'm wrong it means that for every 10 percent increase in price it would lead to about two percent uh decrease in consumption is that a correct uh, assumption yes mr president thank you now mr president uh using uh this uh, elasticity, uh, what would be, uh, or how much will the volume of alcohol consumed by Filipinos decline in uh, uh, 2020? You made mention 46.62% would be the prevails. That's the target. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. President, to answer the first question um, in terms of the volume, um, despite the, the figures that we put on record, um, this, in terms of volume, this would easily be offset by the income growth, that I offset by the income growth. Because of the income growth. Yes, yes. and also the population growth. Okay. I, uh, this representation is very, very um, conscious of this. We went over the figures repeatedly because we are always asked, what is the effect on employment? Yeah. I so will go to that. That would be my last uh, part, okay. Mr. President. Because even though uh, we target a decrease in consumption per person, the growth of the industry will remain there because of the income growth and because of population growth. I hope, Mr. President, that we'll get all these figures from uh, DOF because... It's a little bit confusing, uh, Mr. President. Actually, no? Mr. President, if you look at the historical data, it's very clear. Uh, I, can, I can give his honor a copy. Please, Mr. But President. But I can also um, explain it very quickly. Um, we have uh, data that shows uh, that after 2013, um, the growth rate of the alcohol industry was not affected. Uh, in particular, the... Um, Distilled. Because I think, Mr. President, my, my only point is it appears that it's not deterrent, Mr. President. It, it, it no, doesn't. No, Mr. President, as I said, uh, it becomes a deterrent on a personal basis. And I will demonstrate right now. I will demonstrate right now, Mr. President. Um, So, Mr. President, um, the price of beer at present, SRP, is about 42 pesos. If somebody were to buy five bottles, he would spend uh, 210, okay? That's 42 and cents, some centavos. I'm just keeping it simple. 42 times five, he will spend 210. So, kung meron po siyang 200, uh, kung meron po siyang... Um, uh, 250 pesos, eh di makakauwi pa siya, may 40 pesos pa siya, <laughs> or whatever pang tax. At my rate, which is 48 pesos and some centavos, times five, 
halos 250 na yon. Baka hindi na siya makauwi, wala na siyang pang text, hindi na siya makagrab, whatever. So my point is, it becomes a deterrent um, on a personal level because at around your fifth bottle, it will already be the price of another bottle. So the increase would make somebody who has a 200 peso budget, a 300 peso budget, think twice about that last bottle. And in terms of health, it is binge drinking that we need to look, we need to keep uh, uh, an eye out on because it is binge drinking that has the highest health risk among, among people. And Filipinos have a very high binge drinking rate. So if we can prevent one person from getting that fifth bottle or that sixth bottle, na-achieve po natin yung immediate goal natin. Immediate lang naman na hindi siya maging one more bottle drunk. Now, in terms of the overall uh, sales, it will stay the same because there is an increase in population and there is an increase in buying power. Um, okay, I will agree, Mr. President. It's just that, Mr. President, in my uh, uh, way of thinking, if, if it is a personal uh, matter and uh, the, the, the change uh, in the consumption of one person would actually translate in the uh, national level. But anyway, Mr. President, I will just focus on one thing on this Mr. Uh, President, particular. You're absolutely right. If you have if you have 100 or 1,000 people who are drinkers today and tomorrow na bawas nsa ensam bote, di siya pina bawas. Ang kaya lang apu may increase in population eh. Yes. Yung dating mga bata naging drinkers. Yung dating walang sweldo nagkasweldo. Kaya bibili at bibili. And the best. Despite proof. the fact that every year, magi increase parin po yan, di ba? Uh, yes, this, uh, despite no, the fact. Think and for the that, next five years. And that is our objective. That is what we studied. That there will be a deterrent effect. Pero hindi naman ikamamatay po ng industriya. Conscious po tayo jan. But of course, we are always open to looking at other figures that, that uh, our colleagues have. But at least, I hope that our colleagues find comfort in the fact that. These questions were analyzed, and the answers were also analyzed. Let, let, let me focus, Mr. President, distinguished colleague, to the uh, youth sector and, and the poor sector of our uh, society, considering that uh, this bill is also uh, uh, primarily concerned about the impact of alcohol on the poor and the youth. May, may we ask the good sponsor of, uh, uh, the same question as I, I, I asked a while ago when it comes to elasticity estimates? or the price sensitivity estimates of these uh, two sectors uh, using uh, these elasticity estimates, uh, Mr. President? And perhaps, uh, Mr. President, the, the, the next question would be using these uh, elasticity uh, estimates. Kanina, uh, binanggit po yung point two. Uh, Elasticity. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Ano po yung sa poor, ano yung sa youth, and uh, using this elasticity estimates, by how much are the poor and the youth expected to reduce their consumption under this measure? Mr. President, um, what we have is the, the conclusion that the poor and the youth are more price sensitive. More. That's why they would be more affected by increase in prices and also by health campaigns. And uh, that is a good thing. That is what we want to achieve. It's not just point two, so it definitely it's higher. So what would it be? Uh, do, do we have a, a data? Or we, or I mean, yeah. if the DOF? We don't, we don't have uh, a survey on that, Mr. President. Um, but what one thing I've discovered during the hearings is that uh, it will really help us to have more detailed survey, surveys to guide us in the future. But um, that principle is clear. There is no doubt on, on that principle. It's just that we have not conducted such a survey. Oh, that's unfortunate, Mr. President. We, uh, actually, Mr. President, I agree. And uh, uh, I think the poor and the youth are expected to be uh, more uh, price sensitive. Um, however, uh, if we don't have the data, um, Perhaps I would just go to, to, to my next uh, point, Mr. President. Now, given the uh, current structure of the, the uh, committee report, uh, 
may we know how many cases of alcohol-related uh, diseases, example, liver cirrhosis, cancer, etc., and uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, if we have a data on deaths, uh, do we have do, uh, do we expect uh, to prevent uh, by uh, raising the excise tax as uh, proposed? Mr. President, alcohol accounts for 5% of the Philippines' years of human life loss to illness, disability, and premature deaths. Okay, can we uh, and break down the, yung, ano lang, Mr. President, yung human life uh, uh, loss, accident, an, 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 sino po yung nagkasakit, ilang porsyento, ilang porsyento yung uh, na biktima dun sa drunk driving. Sige, that, that is one chart. I'll look for another yeah. chart that provides Sige po. Uh, other Sige, details. Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, um, because I wanted to focus, Mr. President, actually dun sa accidents and violent acts associated uh, with the uh, over-drinking and uh, how we are uh, addressing it through this uh, particular uh, uh, measure. Um, one, while, while I'm looking for the, the data, I just want to share um, what was uh, uh, presented during the hearing by uh, an emergency doctor uh, who, who we asked to testify. And he said that um, as an emergency doctor, uh, they daily and especially during celebratory periods, have uh, many cases of accident-related injuries, and majority of them are intoxicated. So because of the lack of data um, uh, that I felt, no, I felt there is data, but I don't feel that the data uh, painted a clear picture. I mm -hmm. felt that that testimony in itself was revelational, that here is a first-hand account of a professional who attests to the fact that more than 50% of them uh, were under the influence. More and than fifty percent. Yes, Mr. President. I think the word he used is majority, but we can we can check the records mm -hmm. for uh, accuracy. Um, uh, okay. So this one. But these are there, Mr. President. Um, well, my father had. Uh, cirrhosis of the liver, but it was not alcohol related. His was uh, hepatitis B related. I only mention that because what I'm about to say is uh, uh, the data on liver cirrhosis. And I wanted to share my additional knowledge on this. So deaths in terms of liver cirrhosis recorded is 2006, in 2016 were 4,431 deaths. But there are many debilitating effects of having liver cirrhosis. That, that won't necessarily be recorded as liver cirrhosis. They may die of other causes, but it is still related to liver cirrhosis. I just wanted to put that on record because I'm very familiar with liver cirrhosis. So I'm just saying that we should not limit ourselves to that raw number of, uh, that we have on record. What else did you want me to read? <coughs> Directly related. And then, Mr. President, um, this is something that is very personal to me in the sense that it involves, uh, well, it is actually um, yesterday, uh, the world celebrated International Violence Against Women's Day. And it has been a longstanding campaign of mine. And um, Mr. President, uh, a lot of incidents involving violence, domestic violence, are accompanied by alcohol abuse by the father, and I would assume maybe sometimes it's another member of the family, it could be an uncle, a grandfather, could even be a woman, of course, is under the influence. And those cases are underreported because even our cases of violence per se are underreported. But we have a lot of studies that show that these are accompanied by, um, uh, un by, by the abuser being under the influence. And I know his honor is I need not um, belabor the point when it comes to that issue because his honor is very familiar and yes. also an advocate on this. Yes. That to me is an underreported um, uh, 
issue and repercussion related to alcohol. And we're interested on that, Mr. President, because uh, I think both of us would agree uh, that we really need to uh, protect the quality of life of our people, especially our uh, young people. And that's why uh, we, we, we wanted to find out, because I believe, Mr. President, in some countries, they, were, they, they, they have the uh, 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 mechanism to, to check and uh, uh, measure and look for this uh, data as to how it will uh, change and how uh, it will be prevented, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, I also have a chart. I can just give his honor a copy, but just to very quickly put it on record. Death and disability casually, causally related to alcohol consumption. For TB, 25,000. Uh, this is all 2016. 2016. Uh, 25,000. Diabetes, 33,000. Hypertension, 33,000. Ischemic, this is it, right? Ischemic. 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 Huh? Ischemic. Ischemic. Ischemic heart disease, 74,000. Uh, disease of the liver, 8,900. Malignant neoplasm of the mouth and GI tract, 19,000. And so on and so forth. Uh, neoplasm of the breast, the breast, yes. uh, Mr. President, I, I think the, the bottom line of what we're trying to uh, raise here is that what would happen uh, when we pass this measure, uh, how it will affect the, this, these figures that we are talking about, how it will uh, be prevented. Have uh, we uh, run simulations as to how many uh, 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 deaths, accidents uh, we expect to uh, prevent by raising the excise tax uh, as proposed? Yes, of course, Mr. President, uh, they, they all will have an effect. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, in other countries that have been more aggressive in terms of their taxation uh, uh, and access um, for the youth, uh, it has been, it has had an effect and it, there is a clear uh, change in, in uh, the practice from getting drunk to just socially drinking, which to a certain extent is positive because like I said, binge drinking is the worst health risk. However, we also need to address social drinking if, it, if it's too often and if it uh, intervenes, obviously, with interferes with uh, one's obligation. Mr. President, let, let um, me share my, my, my personal experience. Okay. Last year, I lost a, uh, a good friend of mine from Toronto, uh, a KKB, Cristiano Kabataan para sa Bayan leader, uh, was victim of uh, drunk driving, Mr. Mm -hmm. President, uh, their entire family. Uh, uh, was driving on their way to church, and uh, it's early morning because uh, the, uh, the 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 church starts at uh, church service starts at seven o'clock. So they were there before seven. I think they were uh, going there an hour before the church service, and so th this accident happened. So I, I'm I'm just uh, wondering, Mr. President, if we have the data, if we have already studied, for example, if we pass this measure. Uh, Kasi in, in other countries, nasusukat po nila ito. I'm just interested if we have that. If we don't, uh, or kung ipiprepare, okay lang naman po, Mr. President, na nahintay natin or Actually, uh, ibigay Actually, Mr. Na President, afterwards. we do have this uh -huh. data uh, as to how, what is the effect of uh, our rates on um, uh, reducing alcohol-related deaths. These are based on the DOH, uh, computed on the DOH-DOF rates, which are lower than the rates proposed by this committee and uh, 15,000 deaths can be avert averted in a year. 15,000? Yes. This is based on the Global Burden of Disease Studies 2017. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for that, uh, Mr. President. Again, we, we reiterate that this is not, uh, as we raise these questions, uh, Mr. President, this is not merely uh, just a revenue measure, but also more importantly, a, a policy towards achieving our uh, intended uh, health objectives, uh, Mr. President. And Mr. President, just very quick, uh, put on the, I'll put on the record because the first figure that I read when I said alcohol accounts for 5% of the Philippines, Philippine years of human life lost, his, his honor asked for a breakdown. And uh, the breakdown I have is worldwide. So of course there would be some variance for our country, but you know, at least we have a basis to see that um, worldwide harmful use of alcohol causes 26% of all mouth cancer cases, 11% of all colorectal cancer cases, 5% of all breast cancer cases, 7% of all hypertensive heart disease, 
48% of all liver cirrhosis cases, 26% of pancreatitis cases, and 20% of all tuberculosis cases. Well, thank you, Mr. President, uh, for that information. And uh, if we have uh, information uh, for the Philippines, Mr. President, I would gladly uh, 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 ask for a copy, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, let, let me go to my, uh, my next uh, 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 set of questions, Mr. President, on the impact of uh, uh, this measure on uh, employment. I think the uh, distinguished uh, sponsor uh, uh, made a statement a while ago regarding this. I think uh, it is important that uh, we, 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 we look into this uh, as we move forward. May, may, may I know, Mr. President, the, the, the impact of uh, this measure on uh, employment? Yes, Mr. President. Um, first of all, I'll put on record uh, the impact on the industry. So obviously, if the industry is healthy, then you can assume that uh, there is a correlation with employment. So in terms of uh, the industry, um, I have a chart that shows us that um, between 2013 to 2014 to 2015, 2016 and onward, San Miguel Beer continued to uh, perform very well and uh, their industry was not hurt at all, Mr. President. And then I have the same chart shows the effect for Emperador uh, that had a very slight decline between 2013 to 2014, um, 2013 to 2015, very, very slight, and then it uh, tapers off to a straight line, uh, um, a, a constant economic growth, um, revenue collection throughout the, the remaining years. And um, employment. the same employment. goes for Tanduay, it's pretty, it's a straight line, it's, it's um, almost the same. Th and thank the you, same Mr. also for distillery Limtuaco, Mr. Th President. Thank you, Mr. President, that's the industry performance. Yes. Uh, can, can I uh, focus, Mr. President? I am now uh, going to that. Just on the employment, just, Mr. Yes, President. Yes, and I wanted to just yeah. put, spread that into the record because that is the concern that I hear all the time. So I I'm actually trying to fast track everything, Mr. President, because I'm supposed to leave at 4.30 and I'm still here. <laughs> Mr. President, um, the data I have shows that um, in 20, for, for fermented for beer, uh, the industry did not suffer any decline during the previous uh, increase in, uh, in, in the syntax, Mr. President. In fact, in terms of employment, uh, from 20 employment. To 2010 to 2013, there was actually an increase I don't know where it happened there, but between 2010 and 2013, there was an, a slight increase in employment. 2013 to 2014, no change. And in 2015, there was an increase in employment. That's for I, uh, fermented. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Maybe uh, we're, we're talking about employment, uh, direct employment from, from, from these indices. One of the concerns of, uh, 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 of this representation uh, that, that we're trying to raise regarding this bill is its impact on uh, both direct and indirect, Mr. President, considering that there are other local industries that contribute to uh, alcoholic beverage production. For instance, Mr. President, yung corn grits, uh, packaging materials, cans, uh, fuels, and uh, bottles that are locally sourced in the uh, production of uh, 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 beer. Uh, may we know, Mr. President, if these are all uh, 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 studied, uh, Mr. President, and uh, we are sure na uh, hindi, naman po, uh, hindi naman po ito makakasama and we'll be able to safeguard and uh, uh, protect our uh, laborers. Okay. Okay. Mr. President, um, we have a DOLE position paper that shows that between 2016 to 2019, there were 196 displaced workers from companies um, directly related in the production of alcohol products. Okay. However, it should be noted that such termination of employment is not directly related to the implementation of syntax. Okay. And the top reasons for those terminations or, or cessation of employment were one, reorganization, two, lack of market, and three, financial losses. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We'd like. Uh, make sure that we, uh, we raise this uh, issue in this uh, 
uh, session, um, we remember, Mr. President, that uh, this issue was also uh, raised during the uh, 2012 deliberations on tobacco and alcohol taxes. And uh, to address this, the uh, sin tax reform of uh, 2012 added a transitory provision for retraining and retooling uh, of workers. Am I correct, uh, Mr. President? I'm, I'm yes, sure Yes, and no the other good than, the, than his honor is the best person to consult when it comes to retraining and retooling. In fact, I challenge those in the industries. Um, I think San Miguel Beer did a good job. In fact, I'm aware that uh, Mr. Ramon Ang received the Manage, Manager of the Year Award just a few days ago in uh, expanding the businesses to other industries. And so um, I think it is prudent that uh, you do you do these kind of things. You, you expand in different industries. Uh, any, I know many, um, many CEOs of, of uh, huge companies that say that is, that is what a prudent uh, CEO would do or even uh, the board, you know, to s expand their businesses so that you can weather the tides of uh, various uh, factors that influence, that uh, affect your business. And considering that this is a sin product, and considering that all over the world uh, uh, moves to to increase the prices are are um, tackled by the government, um, it is prudent to to look into different um, business uh, um, opportunities. Would, would the distinguished sponsor uh, op uh, be open to the idea of having this kind of? Uh, provision just like uh, what of we did course. in the syntax to of have a trans transitory it's provision actually if his honor did not offer uh, this representation would uh, uh, insist that his honor gives us a provision of that nature thank th thank you uh, i'd be delighted to do that uh, mr president distinguished colleague but but can can, can we also talk about it uh, considering that the dof uh, uh, and and uh, different agencies of government are here may we know how many were assisted uh, by that program in that uh, 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 syntax reform uh, law where we had this kind of uh, transitory uh, provision? Was the government able to assist these workers, if any, to transition to other industries? Uh, Mr. President, under uh, with, under RA 10351, um, a total of uh, 5,000 displaced workers in the farming industry were assisted uh, to move on to other industries. Other industry. Yes. Um, That's not for alcohol, Mr. President, for yeah. the record. I'm yeah, told that yeah. it's for cigarettes alone. Yes, yes. And uh, do we have any data on uh, where these workers are now? Uh, perhaps what new job... Uh, uh, or industry they are in. I'm told, Mr. President, they, they move to other crops. It will be recalled that um, there's also the Virginia Virginia tobacco tax, which uh, is required to be used also for development of other livelihood opportunities. And uh, that's, that's always there. But uh, of course, we're talking about cigarettes, mm. no? We're not yes, talking yes, about alcohol yes. for that. But on this uh, particular uh, measure, Mr. President, uh, based on the estimates of the uh, Department of uh, Finance, how many workers will be, uh, 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 we are anticipating, will be affected by the passage of uh, this bill? And how will the uh, current proposal uh, help these uh, affected uh, workers? Sorry, what's the question? How many workers will be affected? Uh huh. Yes. Uh -huh. We have some estimates. Okay. Mr. President, as I, as I put on, on record earlier, uh, the assumption is that um, because of price elasticity, uh, the decline in um, volume will easily be upset, and I underscore the word easily, be upset by the income growth and the population growth. So it is really not anticipated that uh, there will be sectors, there will be uh, uh, employ, um, individuals that would be displaced. However, if that will happen, um, DOLE um, and all the other, TESDA and all the other related agencies are ready. In fact, uh, I have um, also reminded them that we should be mindful of this because um, the, the reality is if there would be, but because our data shows that there will no. not be, oh, yeah. but if there will be, then 
this representation does not look at it as a deterrent from passing this measure. This representation looks at it as an opportunity for these people to retool and to enter Maybe into please. industries that have not just as good or even better potentials, but that would contribute to the wellness of our society. I'd like to put on record that the wellness and health industry is a booming industry all over the world. So there's no harm in retooling and uh, helping them transition into industries that, have, that are sustainable. Well, well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleague. I uh, appreciate the responses uh, made by our distinguished sponsor. But uh, at, this, at this juncture, uh, Mr. President, may I just ask for a uh, one-minute suspension because I need to go. Uh, I have liquidity problems, Mr. President. Majority Leader, <coughs> why don't you suspend the session for a few minutes? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to have a bottle of beer, Mr. President. <laughs> oh, okay, Mr. President. Um, actually, next in line to ask questions is Senator uh, Richard Gordon. But uh, the Senate President wants a break. <laughs> I move to a suspend session for a few Senate minutes, Mr. President. All right, uh, session suspended for a few Senate minutes.
Eso. Sessions resume. Mr. Majority Floor Leader. Yes, Mr. President, I believe that uh, the distinguished gentleman from Mulacan, our presiding officer, will uh, um, temporarily postpone his uh, suspend, questions yeah. and suspend his questions so that he can allow other members to uh, uh, interpolate the distinguished uh, chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means. Therefore, Mr. President, uh, we suspend the interpolation of Senator Villanueva for a later date, and we'd like to recognize. Uh, uh, to interpolate the distinguished sponsor, Senator Richard Gordon. May we recognize Senator Gordon, Mr. President? Oh, yeah. Yes, um, we uh, recognize Senator uh, Dick Gordon to interpolate the distinguished uh, sponsor, Senator Pia Cayetano.
Thank you very much, Mr. President. I, I'll just ask a few questions, uh, more, more mostly clarificatory questions uh, on matters of the principles of, upon which we are basing this. Uh, I understand that this is a revenue measure. It is a health uh, measure as well as, uh, what is the third one? Uh, health measure, revenue measure. That, that's it. That's it? That's it. That's it. No, no, I was just explaining that uh, when I studied and when, when this representation studied and prepared the committee report, we were cognizant of the fact that we need to raise funds, so uh, uh, revenue measure, cognizant of the fact that uh, we need to protect health, so health measure, and also for DOF's purposes, simplicity. But, it, but simplicity, in, in the final, simplicity. 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 Yes. But, but the measures is health and revenue. Yes. Now, on the matter of cigarettes, I can see that there is a more, um, how shall I say, more uh, proximate uh, need to uh, uh, convince the people to stop smoking, right? Uh, what response does his honor? The, uh, well, I, I, you're, you're obviously, me. obviously, if, if it is health, in the in the on the matter of uh, cigarette smoking or uh, imbibing of alcohol, must severe the requirement not in health for cigarette smoking. In fact, that was uh, the whole basis for sin taxes, right? I I I cannot say that. I cannot. I, I regret that I can't agree with with his honor because um, our health experts during the hearings uh, for this measure uh, were very clear that uh, there are ill effects of alcohol that must be addressed. And when I expressed, uh, when I when I asked and asked for clarification, if a cigarette is a more um, what do you call it? what's the word um, more pressing issue? Yes. The answer was no. They are both pressing. In fact, uh, there is a report. Um, I think this is, I remember reading this before. This is, uh, I think, in The Economist. And uh, it actually, uh, on a chart on what is the most dangerous drug, by far, alcohol is number one. So there, Alcohol there is, is number a, yes, one. In, in one report, Mr. President, in one report. So let me simply respond to the fact that, no, they are equally important. It, is, it would be inaccurate and a disservice to say that cigarette is more important to address than alcohol. I understand the position of the good lady, and I'm glad to commend her for her very enthusiastic and very learned uh, responses to the questions and her studied uh, sponsorship. I just want to make sure, uh, on the matter of alcohol, uh, I'd imagine cigarette smoking would have uh, more severe effects on the health of our people. Would that be accurate, or are you saying well, let's just say the health department wants to make sure that we discourage both activities of smoking and uh, health and uh, alcoholic imbibement, imbibing. Mm -hmm. That is a very interesting question that deserves a very interesting response. <laughs> uh, in this chart, which I will be happy to share with his honor, um, it differentiates the kind of harm so in terms of the harm to the individual, cigarette smoking does pose, um, not more, but it appears to be roughly equivalent. In fact, I think alcohol still rates higher, but almost the same, harm to self. But in, in terms of harm to community, uh, economic and environmental cost, the cost of alcohol is much more than tobacco. Let's put it this way. There are 16 million smokers, is that correct, in the Philippines? Uh, yes, that sounds, that and how sounds many, correct. And how many people drink or uh, consume uh, alcohol? Is there any ballpark figure in that one? 46 of the population. Yeah. Actually, more, because the prevalence rate of uh, alcohol consumption is 46% of the population. But uh, on the matter of alcohol, beer or fermented liquor is uh, not as severely harmful, not even harmful. Which one? Which one? Which uh, beer drinking, uh, for that matter. No, uh, the the real harmful one would be the uh, distilled spirits. The, the proper response to that, Mr. President, would be the alcohol content of distilled products is higher, and therefore uh, taken taken 
if you compare, then that is the more harmful product to ingest. However, there are social impacts with beer drinking. I, I mentioned in the interpolation earlier that um, in, in uh, middle class economies that have been successful in uh, uh, pushing the youth away from alcoholism, what is now seen as a problem is that yes, uh, there is less tendency to get drunk. It is not cool to get drunk, but there's still a lot of drinking going on, social drinking. And with the social drinking are still the accompanying uh, ill effects, both to self and to, um, to, to the community. Obviously. But I go back, the hard, the hard uh, drinks really have the more, uh, are more toxic because of the level of alcohol. Maybe more uh, harmful, perhaps, not, not necessarily toxic. More harmful. Yeah. I'm fine to use that. Now, when we when we talk about the okay. the uh, pattern of consumption, there are a lot of beer drinkers rather than distilled spirits. Is that correct? That is my understanding. I was asking for the actual figure so I can quote it on record. We did not have it at the moment, but I remember that coming out in a previous... Uh, the data, the data the proves data. it, 75%. Uh, that is actually the volume, volume, the volume, uh, so, uh, the tax collection. Yes. Not, uh, and, and even, <laughs> even the, the volume um, shows that number, but it doesn't reflect the actual uh, number of drinkers. But that is the, but I, I... But the consumption is a lot more. Yes, uh, yes, the, the, the volume, the, yes. It's alcohol, only the difference is the specific... Uh, Percent of uh, uh, yeah, yeah, alcohol. The, uh, what do you call it, what's the term for it? Uh, um, the percentage of proof, liquor. Proof liter. Huh? Proof liter. Proof yeah, liter, yeah, 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 the yeah. percentage of alcohol. So, in other words, it is hard liquor that is indeed more dangerous, not only for oneself, uh, but uh, also for others. That would be more accurate, would it? Because beer drinking doesn't necessarily uh, create an um, But Mr. Uh, President. Is it addicting? Would you say it's addicting? Um, alcoholism is a problem. So whether it's a, you consume it by way of beer or you consume it by way of uh, distilled products, uh, it is still a very harmful and addictive um, practice. And just going back to the, to the question, they're both harmful, Mr. President. There is no level of harm there's no level of alcohol consumption that is considered acceptable. In fact, I myself was surprised when uh, the health experts read into the record the latest findings that there is, that even that one glass of wine a day uh, that, that we were told is uh, good for your heart is, uh, it has been debunked. It is not true. So I am just. I heard you. That, I heard you ah, say okay. it's a debunk in yeah. a very, very debunk yes, because I myself, way. <laughs> because Mr. President, I do not drink, but on the rare occasion w when there is an occasion, I do enjoy a glass of wine. So I was a little bit surprised that the only one uh, um, alcoholic uh, drink that I I would consume maybe three times a year, uh, my excuse does not fly anymore. Well, Your Honor. Uh, I don't drink either, but the only times I have got a little bit inebriated as in the service of our country uh, when I was being asked to uh, come by in, uh, in, uh, when I was Secretary of Tourism in China and also when I went to Taiwan, uh, the Minister of Finance there and the Minister of uh, Trade and Jeffrey Ku, who's a good friend who passed on, said, you've been here several times and I even buy snakes, uh, very poisonous snakes that we mix with your liquor. and. So uh, out of comedy, I started to drink, and uh, not not to in, in moderation, but you know. Uh, in the spirit the time, of friendship. Uh, by, the, by the time the spirit of friendship uh, was terminated uh, late at night, I was a bit inebriated, and uh, fuck it was so bad. The minister of finance even uh, shared a toilet bowl with me, saying this is the best way to become friends: share a toilet bowl with each other. I was very very uh, uncomfortable, to say the least. But nonetheless, uh, the real question that I want to point out is yeah. in really beer drinking, I mean, I, I, I shudder when you say harm. Harm is when it is proven that drinking uh, wine one a day or brandy or after dinner could cause liver cancer or could cause cirrhosis of the liver. Are there studies that point that out very clearly? 
Mr. President, the studies show that there is no safe uh, amount of drinking. That, those are the studies. But uh, I will clarify that it is, what is very clear is that binge drinking, so this is a uh, drinking a huge volume in a very short amount of time, is the worst. It is the one that causes the most harm. So should we now put a limit on the people uh, who drink uh, in, you know, you, when you go to a carinderia or a bar, uh, they would show how many beer bottles they have on the table, right? To show how manly they are. They, it's, ma it's a macho game. And do lahat yung Red Horse, and do lahat yung San Miguel, at nagpapakita sila. Sa probinsya naman, pag dumadaan ka, I'm sure you've seen this. Lalo na doon sa coconut uh, areas, papalakpak sila. And they'll even show, uh, you know, uh, actions that say, let's drink muna, tumagay muna tayo. Uh, what are we trying to prohibit? Uh, beach drinking or the imbibing of alcohol in moderate quantities? Or are we just saying, we want to protect you because we don't want you to drink because you can get sick. I don't think that's what we're trying to do. Because I think there are people dependent on the uh, coconut industry that produces, what is it, Lambanog? And of course, uh, there are people who are uh, in the, uh, as you say, uh, uh, Bilog. A Jin Bilog. A Jin Bilog. Uh, there are people who are in that business. But the real thing that you want to prevent is not necessarily uh, uh, Responsible drinking, drinkings. but binge drinking. Well, Mr. President, let me put it this way. Uh, there is a concept of responsible drinking um, that doesn't mean that the that the Department of Health recommends it because as far as the health oh, sector is concerned, I don't expect them is, to recommend yes, it. As far as the health sector is concerned, there is no safe level of drinking. However, there is that term uh, responsible drinking, and if you ask me, um, it is not a banned product, and so that is the most that we can do. So we in promote effect, responsible drinking and oh. use taxation as a as a tool. So in effect. The real purpose, really, and I don't want to push you in a corner here, is to really generate taxes, revenue. Because there really has not, it has really not been proven that there is a direct connection between drinking and health problems. For example, if we look at the 10 killers of uh, major diseases of the country, uh, I would say cigarette smoking plays a part there because it's uh, uh, mostly respiratory diseases. Number one, yan, di ba? Uh, so, makikita mo, may connection sa sigarilyo yun. Pero sa drinking, hindi naman sinasabi liver, because liver could be consumption of uh, unsanitary food. Uh, raw food, for example. But that you're referring to hepatitis A. Hepatitis B... Uh, cirrhosis. I'm really referring to, to cirrhosis. 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 But even, uh, I think, cirrhosis can be caused by unsafe food Alcohol. as well. Alcohol. 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 Cirrhosis. Cause cirrhosis. cirrhosis is caused by... Uh, is there anybody by from the Department of Health in the building? Well, I can answer, Mr. President, uh -huh. just because my father had uh, liver cirrhosis. I was with your father. And I didn't see him drinking that much. No, he doesn't. Because, uh -huh. because cirrhosis can be from uh, hepatitis B, and that's what my father had. That was it aggravated the hepatitis. No, no, no. He huh? did not drink. So it is not... Co it, so what causes cirrhosis caused then? His, his hepatitis B. His hepatitis B led to cirrhosis of the liver. Precisely. He had hepatitis, and it led to cirrhosis. That's what I said. Ah, yes, I, I thought, you're, I'm, I'm very sorry, I thought his honor meant that uh, uh, his alcohol consumption led to cirrhosis. Oh, I, That's what I, I said. I told you, I was with yeah. your father. Okay. I never saw no, him I'm just clarifying. drunk or drinking that much. I mean, uh, I think it was hepatitis because yes, hepatitis. most of us grew in the provinces, and during the provinces, you can eat anything in the market. Uh, sometimes you get uh, contaminated food. But cirrhosis, is a, is a, can, the, uh, can the health expert there tell me exactly, in no uncertain terms, that cirrhosis is caused by drinking? Because if, cirrhosis, if drinking is, causes cirrhosis, then there is a ground to really put health as the principal reason why we're taxing. At yes. least it would not be as, I will, I, will, I will not use the H word yet. Mr. President, um, it is very clear that liver cirrhosis leads to death. And uh, we have the figures in 2016, we had... Uh, recorded 4,431 deaths from liver cirrhosis in the I am aware of that. I'm aware of yeah, the Because of alcohol consumption. But, but what I would like to see is the alcohol consumption. Because yes. if we are responsible legislators, we are here to raise money, and that's good. But we're also here to make sure that they really are safe. But not at the expense of uh, the employees that will be uh, affected by uh, the beverage industry. For example, uh, they don't ban scotch drinking in Scotland. They even tried to yes. ferment it for such a long, long time. 
Uh, and uh, in fact, I, if memory serves correct, correct, there is a one scotch bottle, uh, bottle that was going to be auctioned for several million dollars. Un unbelievable, because this was, it, was, uh, it was bottled in, I think, 1915 or thereabouts. If my staff would take a look at it, uh, they, they, it was bottled in uh, thereabouts, and I think it's called, uh, you know, a lot of our friends drink that. Uh, once in a while, I, I take a sip out of it because it's very, very expensive, you know, scotch whiskey now. Mr. President, um, just to repeat uh, clearly, deaths in the Philippines caused by alcohol consumption, liver cirrhosis, 4,431 deaths. So that's liver cirrhosis because of alcohol consumption. But I don't think you're saying alcohol consumption caused liver cirrhosis. Are you saying that? It does, Mr. President. These are the doctors saying yes. Well, I can get any number of doctors that will say otherwise. I just want to be sure no, Mr. that we're President, all on the same page. We are on the same page. I'm very familiar with that because- I'm more comfortable I, with the fact that you say alcohol caused traffic accidents, driving under the influence of liquor, maraming namamatay dyan. I'd be more comfortable if you tell me that figure. If you tell me that figure na nagbanggaan, dahil lasing yung isa, I would be more comfortable. But to say that alcohol causes cirrhosis of the liver, if so facto, then I'm sure the whole world, including Scotland, including Irish whiskey, Scotch whiskey, you know, Japanese uh, whiskey, they would, they would really go and put their foot down. Mr. President, it's a fact. I, I can't convince his honor other than re reiterating that fact, no, and even I, WHO says so. Well, WHO. In fact, I, I can put on record further, death and disability causally related to alcohol consumption. I, I, I just want to have a firm figure, because I want to be, I want it settled in my mind and in my heart that indeed, uh, there, uh, in, especially in cold countries, for example, how many people die of cirrhosis of the liver in Russia? Mr. President, uh, uh, do we have any figures to that effect? Mr. President, I read it two times already, 4,431 uh, liver cirrhosis caused by, al death by liver cirrhosis caused by alcohol consumption in 2016. I, I, I'm thinking, Your Honor, and I think, I don't think the gentle lady uh, quite heard me, when I said how many cases of cirrhosis of the liver caused by excessive vo vodka drinking in cold countries like Russia. Do we have any data to that effect? Can my staff also look, look at it? I am sure we can get that data. And the only reason why I say that with certainty, I don't know about the actual drink, but I was with my father for seven, eight months on and off when he was confined in the University of Southern California. And the two causes for it, the two main That's reasons. Stanford? No, um, University of Southern California, USC. Oh, yeah, California. okay, sorry, the Trojans. Yeah. And the two main reasons uh, that the people there were confined was uh, liver cirrhosis due to hepatitis or liver cirrhosis due to alcohol abuse. All right, okay, I'll take that. So that's take just that. from my practical uh, but that's a, That's an individual. Uh, yes. And that's an individual. Rene, no? All right. And we also Whose have. His name is Reborn. And we also have data from WHO that says alcohol liver disease, otherwise known as ALD, is the most common cause of cirrhosis, cirrhosis in the Western world and is currently one of the 10 most common causes of death. Cirrhosis of the liver? Cirrhosis of the liver. And as to his And that honors, is caused by alcohol abuse? Yes. And um, I, I would appreciate it if you could give me a copy of it right sure, now. Sure, Mr. President, we'll be very happy uh, to. Yes, and, because, uh, uh, that's to very helpful. To respond to his honor's question about Russia, liver cirrhosis mortality rate in Russia is among the highest in the world. That's what I wanted to Russia ask. Russia also <laughs> had the highest rate of alcohol attributed, attributable liver cirrhosis mortality for both genders. That's, that's where I was leading up to. I mean, I think you should uh, take a look at it. They would have it in the millions. I would imagine people drink there because it's cold, because they're poor, and they uh, take to the bottle to uh, lessen their uh, uh, insecurities and their fears, just as so many Filipinos go to shabu, or sometimes uh, liquor. Uh, but then, of course, that's more popularized also by Hollywood, na, or, or, or even our movies that uh, tend to blame liquor for, uh, as you say the other day, which uh, uh, caught me agape. Uh, it leads to wife beating. 
<laughs> wife beating. Because I, I see that in the drama of many Filipino movies. And I own the movie house, so I know what we're talking about here. <laughs> now, having said that, Your Honor, uh, uh, if indeed, would 4,000 be a legitimate figure to say, raise taxes so that they will not be? 4,000 people dying of cirrhosis? Mr. President, um, liver cirrhosis is not the only problem um, caused by alcohol consumption. Uh, we also have um, TB, 25,000 uh, 25, people were either uh, died or disabled because of TB. Tuberculosis? Uh, yes, tuberculosis. Um, is that because of chew beer colosis? Could be. <laughs> uh, for diabetes, Mr. President, um, and, I, and this is where I'll, people do not, a lot of people, I, I personally only learned about this a few years ago, um, a very big contribution to diabetes is alcohol intake. Because there is a point of agreement sugar. between us, diabetes because yes. of too much sugar. And the number here is very high, Mr. President, it's 33,000. And I'm looking at my inanak, uh, Senator Subiri, who's on the podium. Uh, what impact will that have on the sugar industry in our country? Uh, on, on which one? We already passed the sugar tax earlier, uh, last 17th Congress. It had an impact on the sugar industry because uh, the, uh, the end products became more expensive, slightly more expensive, and therefore there was a drop in consumption. But it was a health measure, so the industry had to just absorb uh, the impact, which is now they're feeling because of the low prices of sugar and the farmers are, are being hit hard. Just Let me put this this way, Your Honor. Dear colleague. If indeed it kills, <clears throat> if indeed in Russia it kills, then the proper law would be ban it. Let's not be hypocrites. Let's not tax it. But it must be banned. Because getting money from something that can kill it's hypocritical. Mr. President, um, I think most countries have decided that uh, there are repercussions to banning. Yeah. So the, I, this I, has I, been the... You and I have talked about this before. Yeah. Said, huh? So that's why uh, we have a lot of products on the market that are not good for us, but um, they continue to be in the market, and the best way we can, we can um, deter or... Uh, limit consumption is um, uh, health promotions. We, His Honor is also an advocate of that, health promotions and um, taxation. Yeah, so uh, in other words, this is not a panacea to quell uh, alcoholism in the country. It is really a way of distracting the drinker from going into other pursuits other than drinking. In other words, uh, yeah. if it gets into expensive, then go to beer instead of uh, Alcohol, and that's a, another concern because kung gin, uh, in gin bilog or gin bulag or the other things uh, are going to hurt. How many industries would be affected uh, by the tax? And what would, is there any, uh, uh, are there any figures that have been uh, proposed by the Department of Finance on how it would affect uh, the employment, the investments of these people? Yes, Mr. President. Um, Earlier, we put on record when uh, Senator Joel Villanueva was interpolating that um, we look at the data from uh, 2012 when the, the latest tax measure was passed, and uh, it shows that um, there was actually no effect on employment when it comes to the beer industry. And uh, for the distilled spirits, there was um, some effect, but then uh, it kicked out. It kicked up right away. That's specifically for employment. But as to revenues, um, for San Miguel beer specifically, uh, the revenues continued to increase. There was not even any marked decrease. Uh, I'm not talking about beer. Beer is going to be there forever. People yeah, are okay. still going to drink it. I'm talking about for, uh, so, the distilled spirits. So for the distilled spirits, Mr. President, um, on average, it was pretty much the same. There was a slight decrease for one company, but the rest pretty much showed a steady rate of, uh, of uh, revenue throughout the years. So it is the position of our honor that uh, even if we raise the taxes on alcoholic beverages, for particularly distilled spirits, which uh, presumably is more deadly, if you want to use the word, I don't use the word deadly, it's more... Uh, well, it has more alcohol. Uh, I was going to, I was I tried to look for a word. Uh, it's more... Uh, not toxic, not deadly, 
but certainly Potent? Huh? Potent? no I, I i used to use it uh, deleterious, deleterious. Most, more deleterious to the body uh would that be uh you, you think that there should be no impact mr president um Yes, the response is uh, because of our population growth and the uh, purchasing power, income growth, uh, it is um, the position of uh, DOF that uh, demand will still be there and uh, the industry will continue to, to, to thrive, actually, because, because uh, we, we are moving into a middle, uh, upper middle income. And so if, if the 2013 figure showed that there was barely any effect, in fact, for beer, as I said. Upper as middle income, did you say? Most of the poor people drink gin bilog. These are usually people who yes. have had the mother system. Their only sources is to drink a couple of uh, tobagai. Uh, but upper middle, that would really refer to the higher yes. end drinks. No? I, I mean, I can, I, can, I can rephrase my statement so we uh, don't have yes. to go into that. But generally because the in, the income the increase in population alone and then the growth of income on the average will be enough to offset any possible decline in consumption that is that those are the figures that and we have and then what they say about cirrhosis of the liver and then what they say um, about uh, no, no mr the, president the, 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 uh, actually that's a, that his honor um poses a question that is very interesting to this representation, and this is the best way I can uh, explain. Uh, when, when you look at, I'll, I'll, I use beer as an example, when you look at the price, the retail price of beer currently at 42 pesos, and uh, you multiply that by five or six beers, which is the normal inuman rate, it's on that fifth or sixth beer that your budget of about 250 pesos will, will end. For the so, month? For the month or for whatever, the Whatever. What, no, let, in, in, one, in one drinking session. So therefore, you will, the, the tax measure will effectively raise the price of beer from 46 pesos, so 42 to 48. And around the sixth beer, you run out of money. So we did achieve our goal of lessening the intake of that person on, on the, the contrary, sixth, if you're on the sixth if beer. You're, if you're dealing with your barcada, when you run out, oh, ako naman. Well, next round is on you. And of course, meron naman din pong ganon. But, yeah, but yeah. that is the general effect of, of taxation. You make it a little bit more prohibitive. That's, that, that's why on an individual basis, uh, we, this representation stands by uh, the measure so that we can at least attempt to make it a little bit more painful on the pocket when it comes to that fifth or sixth round. Th that, is all, that is all we're trying to achieve. Well, you know, in the 1920s or 30s thereabouts in America, they instituted prohibition. And uh, prohibition as a way upon which they said, oh, you know, all the Bible preaching uh, folks in the American Congress said, we'll have prohibition. And what happened? There was a lot of uh, uh, crime. Al Capone made this big uh, box there. He created the untouchables, uh, uh, Elliot Ness and all that. And if he didn't read it, you can watch it in the movie, The Untouchables. Uh, they were smuggling beer from, uh, uh, smuggling liquor from, uh, uh, from uh, Canada. And in fact, I don't think I'll be out of my way here. I'll be, I'll be considered as uh, being irresponsible. The Kennedy clan, Joseph Kennedy, they made their money smuggling Hagen Hague from Scot Scotland. Is the general lady aware of that? No. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. So in other words, you can tax it and ang sukli niyan magi-smuggle pa rin, no? Mr. President, akala kong sasabihin niyo, ang sukli nun magiging politician na lang yung smuggler. Well, that's also one way, you know. I, I, don't you see it now? Uh, there is narco politics. There is uh, people who are in construction. Uh, na, well, instead of giving the politicians, I may as well run. There are quite a few of them, as you know, and we're not going to mention that, are we? But anyway, to make a long story short, I think that uh, there is always uh, uh, a reaction. And, uh, and uh, I think I just lay the premise on this. The, 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 the government must not be a hypocrite when it really intends to get money from liquor, money from alco alcoholic uh, 
substances. And government must also try to measure the impact on the economy, upon the people working in this, uh, uh, in, in the people, and also on lawlessness. Because in prohibition, one of the things that happened was the moonshine that came out. And, uh, you know, there was uh, another famous incident in America where uh, there were clans fighting over uh, moonshine in the deep south. So well, I guess what I'm trying to say is we're all looking for a balancing uh, system where we can have liquor and at the same time make some money, but at the same time we don't uh, throw the baby with the bath, so to speak. Is, isn't that yes. the case? Yes, we're trying to find that right balance, Mr. President. Not to throw the baby with the bath, <laughs> literally. Yes. So, okay, thank you. Uh, now, let's go to cigarettes. Now, cigarettes is more or less the same thing. Only popularly, it is more pronounced that cigarettes cause cancer. It's advertised on the packs. In fact, the gentle lady has also been pushing for putting a very more, uh, more illustrative ways to prevent uh, cigarette smoking. But now, uh, is it science or is it innovativeness? They've come out with uh, smokeless cigarettes, right? And according to them, it's the, uh, when you don't burn nicotine it's, uh, or burn the cigarette, it's uh, actually a lot safer. In fact, 90% safer according to some studies and which we have to take with a grain of sand as well. His because Honor, on both sides Honor have Senator, a tendency to overstate their case. Yes, Mr. President, and in the, in the, um, uh, what do you call it, in the trip I made to, to England. London, to England, uh, where we had um, the proponents of the e-cigarettes there, uh, I actually asked the question, kindly explain to me how you came up with 95% safer. And my staff who was with me is here. Le sorry, 95% less harmful. I always make that mistake. 95% less harmful. And I, I, I could not, he, he did not explain it to me. <laughs> he did not explain it to me because I truly wanted to understand. Mr. President, believe me when I tell those who, who feel, who feel uh, more um, open about uh, uh, e-cigarette and, and you know, it, it's be allowing people to switch, I myself, I'd be very happy to support a product that would really help people switch and uh, be not subject them to more harm. But the bottom line is, um, but that's the ideal, right? That is the idea. But the that's bottom the ideal. No harm. Yes. But, but even food can be harmful. Of course, Sugar can be harmful. That. Yes, we know that, Mr. President. Yes. Uh -huh. And even even our our um, you know over the counter uh, uh, pill for a headache has side effects. We know that. Yes. However. Um, let me just say this, that uh, during our hearings, it was established that the FDA has not allowed any of these e-cigarette companies to say that it is safe or safer. They're not even allowed to say that yet. I think they're going through hearings right now to even determine if they can, but right now they cannot say but that. In America, in, the, in, in the, Canada, in, the US. in England, they have. No, no, in the, in the U.S., they cannot. They cannot say that. They cannot in America, they have. It's, uh, no. They're not it's, allowed it's to say harmful. it, Mr. I, President. I no, it they're not allowed to say it, and that's why a lot of them have been made to explain why they have said that. They, like a lot of these companies, have uh, have you know gone to um, schools in the past. No, in the past, they've gone to schools and explained to kids and have used those terms of reference, parang less harmful or safer, and they were called to task because they're not allowed. So I'm I'm just putting that on record, Mr. President, because. Uh, this representation is more than happy to support, um, you know, when the when the right studies are there to show that this can really be a product that uh, will not cause the kind of un unexpected harm. But the bottom line is there is there there the experts are not prepared to to tell us what what harms to even expect because it's such a new product. I have I have a research from my staff here that says. Uh, in April 2019, very recently, the United States FDA authorized the products for the U.S. market appropriate for the protection of public health because among several key considerations, the products produce fewer or lower levels of some toxins than combustible cigarettes. Mr. President, um, during the hearings, it was clarified that although they are allowed to sell it, they cannot make any health claims. They are still fighting to be able to say, to make some health claims to the effect that it is safer so or less harmful. So the rule is not totally completed yet? 
um, I, I, my understanding of the process is, is, is something like that, that they are still uh, asking for permission to be able to make certain claims. So it's still in the process? Yes, but as of now, they cannot make those claims. Uh, well, the and government of Canada is saying completely replacing cigarette smoking with vaping will reduce your exposure to harmful chemicals. Because in the principle of Canada, the United States and England, is to move people from their addiction to yes. tobacco, to, uh, uh, to, how do you say, combustible products, and cost, go, cost them to go to another uh, product that is uh, uh, less harmful, a lot more less harmful. That's what they're doing. And I think that's uh, in, in the realm of the capitalist society. It really is trying to make business thrive at the same time trying to protect the public. Mr. President, there's a big difference between the models in Canada and the UK and our country. And I, I, can, I can summarize it in a few sentences. Uh, those countries have been in the forefront of tobacco regulations. Yeah. So for example, um, in, uh, uh, in the UK, uh, they have plain paper packaging and they have no point of display. So um, it is, so, so they have been successful in convincing the youth that there is nothing cool about smoking. And you've been repeating that over and over yes. again, and I'm very impressed and about so that. And so because of that, they now can explore what this alternative product can do to those three million smokers that I are think still addicted. The magic word, so honor. I do see, Mr. President, um, I, I'd like our colleagues to understand that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm above average intelligent person, so I understand the, what they are trying to achieve. Hum However, humility doesn't suit you. <laughs> However, um, the, the, the environment in our country is very different. So, you know, How Mr. is that? The reason is we do not have plain packaging here. So, so we can have that. We, yes, exactly. In, in fact, fact, in fact, Your Honor, if you go to Japan, they're still doing combustible smoking. That's uh, that's the more uh, prominent smoking, isn't it? Yes. And yes. Japan is a very health conscious nation. Yes. After all, their citizens are very, very old. Unless they have a policy of killing the old people by encouraging them to continually smoke combustible products. Anyway, Mr. President, all I'm saying is um, at the right time, um, given the time, that, that's, uh, that's the more important phrase, given the time, I will finalize some bills I have on uh, further regulating the tobacco I products. I will probably join you on and that Please, score. I'd as be you very know, happy. As you know, as you because know. because I, I always put on record, um, and I even off the record, I, I do not hesitate to remind my colleagues that taxation is not the only measure. In fact, it should, it should never be used as the primary um, means to address health concerns. It is a tool, but the it's just one. The power to tax is the power to destroy. We learned that so in law school is, very well. It is just one tool. So um, we do need this other accompanying legislation to be put in place. But having said that, when, when, and when, because I, I believe everybody's on board in, in passing some kind of measure, um, I, 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 this representation would be very concerned if, uh, you know, we open the gates wide open for e-cigarettes precisely without all those controls measures measure in place. Well, I, I think nobody's going to argue with you on that point. There's got to be a holistic approach. effort to make sure that we discourage our children. Uh, first of all, you don't sell cigarettes, whether it's combustible or non-combustible, to minors. By the way, what is the gentle lady drinking? I've been noticed that she has different bottles there. Uh, is she imbibing I am, uh, some form of uh, liquor? <laughs> open, oh, open system. I'm, I'm combining different flavors. Actually, That's like vaping. You're combining an open system. You're putting all kinds of things there. Mr. That may President, be dangerous. This is just water. <laughs> and then this is actually tea. And the reason why there's a cup is because I'm attempting to keep the tea hot. And it will burn my throat if I drink it straight. So, so I let's tax hot water then. It's harmful. Only if, only if you are impatient. <laughs> if you are patient enough, then it gets cold. Uh, the, the point that I'm trying to make, Your Honor, is that we have to be sensible about the whole thing. And I'm just trying to raise points. Here's a country that's very, very rich, Japan. I'm sure China smokes like a chimney as well. Uh, that's it? Uh, how, how, how about the smoker is uh, the Chinese people? Maybe we should sell cigarettes uh, to China so that they will not invade us in the future.
with their pogos and all that. I'm not talking about army invasion. Not yet, anyway. Mr. President, a tidbit of information from what I know in Japan is the reason why the e-cigs have not really gotten a stronghold there is because the, the cigarette lobby. They're protecting the, the cigarette lobby. Yeah. That's right. So there you are. So, uh, so to my mind, the gusti boost non is putandum to each. You know. Uh, and I, yeah. I, I subscribe to that. That is each precisely why page. I take time to explain that we have a different environment from other countries that have taken a more liberal view in in um, using e-cigarettes as a mode of cessation. I, I take time to say we, we have to address, and that is actually the recommendation of WHO, and I take it to heart that uh, we need to assess our own situation to determine what works for us. You know, sometimes in my experience in the Senate, I don't necessarily follow the World Health Organization hook, line, and sinker. You will recall Dengvaxia, and Dengvaxia has not been declared by WHO as uh, not effective, they're, they're even vacillating whether it's effective or not effective. In the meantime, we spent an awful lot of money that was taken, and I, I charged the DFA for this, DO, DOF for this. We raised money, and then some of these cabinet officials can be profligate, and they will spend money and even harm our people. And then other people in the government will start perorating about how harmful it is. It creates more harm to the point now that we have Incident says there are people who don't want to have vaccination, and now we have nine polio cases in the Philippines. Nobody was watching the store. And this has been my problem, Mr. President. My problem is I think we should put it in the context of how uh, our interests in the country must be protected. And I think uh, even now I say that there's too much noise, mm -hmm. Lenny versus the president, Lenny versus Panelo, and then now you have... Uh, what when we should really be uh, concentrating on the very things that are needed. I would like to support more resources for the government. And uh, why? Because I think not only to protect our people, not only to have the, all these social services, but also to protect our country from invasion. We need to have uh, a good Air Force, a good Navy. And if you start reading what happened in World War II or in other countries like World War I, that, that, that is something that uh, America had to rally very, very fast to raise the resources for a strong military. They started with 289,000, reduced it to 185,000, and then when the war clouds came, they raised it to a million and a half until the end of the war where they had over maybe two million people in arms, not to mention it became the arsenal of democracy. And how was that generated? Taxes. Taxes and taxes. Even bonds uh, that were sold throughout the entire country. And that's what precisely what I'm saying. If we're going to tax, let's tax wisely. And let's be, uh, let's be uh, you know, be direct, and I'm, I'm sure that's the objective of the gentle lady, be direct to our people that this is really essentially a revenue measure that to be able to combat all the other health issues that come with it, there's got to be a more holistic approach. That means that we have to do all kinds of things to make sure that we can really uh, benefit our people, Your Honor. Now, going back to the question of cigarettes, uh, e-cigarettes, uh, I would be predisposed right now not to come up with a knee-jerk response where we say eliminate it or ban it. Uh, I think it's important that we read the literature in other countries uh, so far as that is concerned. And therefore, uh, I would be very, very conscious of the fact that when we uh, start doing this, uh, there is a lot more room for regulation. For an example, as I heard you yesterday, you were talking about the open tax system that is really more dangerous. For example, if I were to paraphrase what you said the other day, open tax system is that they can put in other substances. Not open tax, just open. Open, open. open system. Yeah. Open gadget, open tank. It's a tank. tank. Oh, yeah. I, th I thought it's his honor tank. said, I thought his honor said open tax, open tank. That's, that's correct. You are so sensitive to taxes, are you, like me? <laughs> <laughs> but open tank yes, system, yes. you can put all kinds of things, even uh, vitamin E, which is supposed to be the favorite of Senator Recto, but then when you put as a uh, as as it becomes uh, very dangerous and it's imbibed in the body, it becomes uh, a killer. So, in effect, Your Honor, when we start talking about that, is that the enemy, really, uh, the open tank system, or if we encourage... As I said, even the FDA uh, is not prepared, safe or less harmful, uh, it's, not, it's not allowing the industry in the U.S. to say that. 
uh, we should be taxing these products like regular cigarettes. And what I would like to assure our colleagues is that if we are going to make a decision and let's say half of us feel like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a healthier or safer substitute, but the, other of, the others of us feel, well, there's so many undetermined health risks there, then the decision should really be to err on the side of safety, I'm on the side of um, caution. I am very glad that you said alternative and that we err on the side of caution. Because if we overtax it, then the situation is instead of you know, protecting our people, uh, there are several things that can happen. They'd go back to cigarette smoking, or you would be encouraging all kinds of cigarettes from coming into the country, like this happening right now. I wonder if the, DF, the DOF has the figures. Once in a while, I see multi-million pesos worth of cigarettes smuggled have been caught by our police forces. Isn't that correct? Yes. So if we overtax, then the other alternative would now be to allow these people to have an opportunity to flood the market with untaxable cigarettes because they're illegal, they're smuggled, <coughs> and in the process, <coughs> excuse me, and in the process, uh, we uh, we bite ourselves. <coughs> or we should <coughs> we shoot ourselves in the foot. Water Mona. That's not because of smoking. I don't smoke. Is there an answer? Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> I, I know you're tired, but uh, I respect that. But to me, we are over, no, creating a situation where there will be more cigarettes at the, that are combustible that will come in, and that's why we have to find the balance. And this is the whole point of my questioning. What is the right balance? Otherwise, if we look at the statistics, how many, how much, uh, how many millions of uh, Pesos have we caught uh, in terms of the uh, smuggling cheap cigarettes from everywhere, even counterfeited we and illegal trade? We are cognizant of that, Mr. President. I mean, the, the, the issues that, that so come So there is room, there is wiggle cigarette. room, in other words, in your proposal. Not too low, not too high, but looking for the uh, mean or the average that I think we can do so enough to well, protect our people from going into cheaper cigarettes if they're overtaxed, or enough to say you have an out, use, uh, uh, you can use the cigarettes, there's an option, but just be careful, uh, do not use the other substances which have cannabis or other things like that. Would that be where we're going, Your Honor? Well, just to clarify, I've repeatedly said uh, during uh, interpolation for alcohol products that we're always open to any combinations because there's a couple of things we're looking at. We, we look at the distilled versus the fermented and then um, you know, the different types of taxation. With the e-cigs, we're only talking about one taxation. It's really just the rate. And uh, there is no distinction between the types of um, uh, ends or vaping products uh, right now. And uh, the recommendation of the committee is to tax it as we tax a cigarette. Um, at this point, Your Honor, I have to say that I stand, I feel very strongly about that because until there are definitive studies that tell us that there are no, there are uh, very, we can clearly identify uh, the health risks and all of them are very minor and minimal. Uh, this representation does not have the, um, does not have the, the heart to, to present anything but a rate that is equivalent to cigarette taxes. Because uh, from all the studies I've made, from all the discussions I've had, uh, this is the best way to go. And we can always change it in a year, in a two or three years. We're not making it more expensive. But um, we are not prepared to recommend a, a lesser rate. Or we can make haste slowly, so to speak. In other words, introduce a tax, and if it works, we raise the taxes as we go along within the next five years, if you like. But nonetheless, uh, I don't think there is any cogent proof that uh, if you go into the high end, uh, the high side, you will be provoking a smuggling spree in the country, which I, I'm sure we're going to have because uh, things are getting more expensive, and people will always try to uh, do a habit. You can tell a smoker, oh, it's going to kill you, but they'll still smoke. 
Uh, I've seen so many people, some of my friends, they keep smoking, and I tell them, you know, how many times have I brought people to a hospital and they're gasping for breath and they have all these uh, diseases. So it's important that you stop, but they still won't stop. Yes, I agree with his honor on that. Yeah. So we are open to amendments to that uh, direction. We will listen. We, we, of course, we listen to all the proposals of our colleagues, but on the issue of, uh, of um, the rate for e-cigarettes, um, I'm just being candid about my uh, inclination to stick to the rate because of the undetermined nature of, uh, of the health issues and all the reports that we are getting from all over the world and the fact that many countries are even banning it. So, I, Banning what? Banning e-cigarettes per se. Banning. Ba the fact that, that a lot of countries are, are even using the extreme of banning tells us that there really are health risks. And even though it doesn't seem to be the root America, that Canada, UK, as you say, you told us as a 33, model, 33 the, countries, the, Soviet, the Russians, the Japanese, India, India is banned. Yeah, so I heard you say India the other day, and I hear yes. Senator Tolentino reminding me about it. But you know, it's not just that simple. Uh, because uh, banning, like prohibition, can cause, again, very serious uh, uh, effects. Yes, and that's why, Mr. President, we are pursuing the regulation. I simply mentioned um, banning to point out that these countries have determined that these products are harmful to their people. Thus, it behooves this representation to recommend a rate. To, number one, we are allowing it, but to recommend a rate lower than cigarettes is not something this representation is prepared to do. Well, will, it's my job to listen to all uh, uh, concerns and, and uh, to be open, but th this is the position that your chairman has right now. But then that is why we're a deliberative body, aren't we? Yes, Mr. President. We and debate I, I here and, and we try to find that. out to, uh, based on the debates, uh, we're not trying to disagree with each other. We're just trying to find out the best solution. Now, Your Honor, according to the Bureau of Customs, which is under the Department of Finance, last I heard, the top three items smuggled in the Philippines are luxury vehicles, cigarettes, and oil. That is an indication that if we start overtaxing, you may have more smuggling of cigarettes. You'll defeat the purpose of making our people safer when they smoke cigarettes or you'll defeat the purpose of generating more revenues. Um, I, I, this, honor, this representation acknowledges the important role of, uh, of um, calibrating uh, the rate so that we, we find that sweet spot. But we also always put on record that um, smuggling is also an issue addressed by good governance. And uh, we cannot shy away from our responsibility to tax by simply saying there will be smuggling. Having said that... No, no, I did not say that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I hope I did not misunderstand me. I'm saying that uh, you can curb smuggling. And you don't have to encourage it by overly taxing a particular product. Yes, we, we uh, recognize that. And like I said, that. we have to look for the uh, mean uh, in what we're supposed to do. Uh, because, you know, as... Uh, Young as I am today, I've heard of uh, smuggling in the old days, champion cigarettes. Uh, you know, you had uh, Bokalan in Cavite before, and now you have the uh, Mighty cigarettes and, and all that. You have uh, all kinds of cigarettes that were smuggled in this country, and it's been a, it's a curse. And uh, while well, we can say good governance is it, but you still always have the problem of uh, certain individuals trying to uh, destroy the culture of honesty and uh, uh, be ahead of the pack by being wiser in terms of uh, greed than uh, helping the country. Agree, Mr. President. Yes, thank you. I just want to wait, raise these points in the interpolation so that we don't we we all know where hopefully everybody can choose a position. Uh, uh, you know, the other thing that I wanted to say is uh, uh, on the matter of uh, of uh, the devices used. Uh, I understand that in your pro the, the proposal of her honor, there is a proposal to uh, tax uh, the uh, jewel. Yes, Mr. President, we are taxing the device. 
which leads to another problem because if you're going to overtax the uh, uh, you'll come up with uh, with the uh, cheap copies of it that uh, and uh, when you do that then you might re really expose our people to more dangers as you can see uh, uh, they're already paying a, a fee when they bring in the product, right? They're taxed uh, at customs, at the gates. And they have a VAT there. And then uh, when you buy it in the store, they have a VAT. But uh, if you're going to tax them, uh, was it 40% a luxury tax? I think that's, uh, um, that may the, be overdoing it. The committee report, Mr. Pres Mr. President, is 20%. Yeah, I, I, I just want to uh, tarry a little here. And I know we were still in the amendment part of the, uh, we were still in the debate part. But I think that, uh, again, I say we must make haste slowly on the matter of this. Because, because uh, people try to repair uh, a damaged, uh, because it, it has become so expensive, they will try to repair it by themselves. And in the process, when they put in all these substances, it explodes on their faces. So it's important that we look at the balance, look at uh, balances, uh, balance the risk against the opportunity to generate more revenues. I, I, I would hope that the gentle lady would be open to uh, amendment to that uh, aspect. I'm very cognizant and always very open. I just also want to spread into the record that I'm not sure of the year, but maybe the 1950s or the 1960s, the ads for cigarettes uh, showed um, women uh, using cigarettes as a weight loss um, device. And, and at that time, um, that was acceptable because there, they, I guess there were not enough studies that really showed the health uh, problems caused by smoking. And so, Mr. President, I'd like to spread into the record that uh, your chairman of the committee simply um, is making use of the, the voluminous um, data that we've gone through and the uh, discussions we've had with international experts that tell us that there are still many health un unknown health risks. And that is the only reason why we hold back on following the model in uh, England, wherein um, they are more open to recognizing this as a um, cessation tool, even though it is not registered as a cessation tool. That is all, I mean, all, all the explanations that you will hear from me, um, bearing, uh, all, all my explanations will revolve around that, that until there are further studies, and that is what all the experts say, we just have to move with caution. And with caution means don't automatically treat it as a, a product that you know, is the solution to, to cigarette smoking. Let us not forget, and this has always been under the radar when, uh, when um, these e-cigarettes came into the market, we have other cessation tools available. And right. so they should, and, and in fact, the study presented no less than the health, than the e-cigarette advocates in my meeting in uh, London um, were, I, I wouldn't want to say rebutted, but the study they showed were further clarified by behavioral scientists that were invited to attend that meeting to say that the decline in smoking was, cannot necessarily be attributed to e-cig use because it does not reflect other cessation tools that the smokers were using. So I'm just putting, sharing and putting on record the information that your representation, your chairperson learned while, while trying to give the best possible recommendations to the body. Well, there are a couple of things, maybe three things that I'd like to react on that one. Number one, uh, that in the, the introduction of uh, advertising that says uh, it made women uh, look chic or and it lose was a weight, weight. It was a weight, to lose weight. a weight loss uh, advertising yes. that collided with uh, a law later on that would be called the truth in advertising law. Uh, second, uh, which is still uh, uh, pre prevalent, uh, pre uh, prevalent, and then the other matter of, uh, you know, the, the, you know, Madison Avenue USA or Park Avenue, if you like, uh, they, they come out with all kinds of uh, goodies like uh, Marlboro Man, who obviously died later on uh, from smoking. So even that did not prevent people from continuing to smoke. It's just a, the macho bit, or you see people smoking in World War II movies or even 
even now, you still have people smoking uh, uh, in uh, some of the more uh, action-oriented uh, uh, movies that shows uh, this macho to smoke, even women smoking. In fact, even now, it's worse. They, they, even, they use weed or they snort in the middle of the cameras and show it to everybody. So again, I, as you say, there must be a holistic approach to all this. But uh, in reality, uh, we are really talking here, uh, like I said a while ago, of uh, raising taxes, but at the same time, uh, not throwing the baby with the, ba with the bath, and that's, uh, uh, you know, to use a cliche, let's not uh, kill the golden eggs because uh, we will end up le having less taxes. On that note, Your Honor, I, I'm glad that some of our uh, colleagues are here. I know they've been listening in the refectories I was a while ago, but I'm happy to terminate my uh, interpretation with thanks to the gracious lady for her time. I know it's uh, kind of tiring when you're presenting a system here a new system of that, uh, and I thank her. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I also thank the gentleman from Olongapo for his questions and uh, spreading into the record some concerns and his insights is, they are always welcome. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we thank, the, there, yes. we thank the gentleman <coughs> from uh, Zambales for his uh, inter interpretation, uh, interpolations, Mr. President, rather. Mr. President, um, our other members are still asking for more time. Tomorrow we'll open it up again uh, for interpolation first hour. Uh, but with that, uh, Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 1074. Mr. President. Any objection? Any non consideration suspended? Mr. President, I move to, to uh, resume consideration of Senate Bill Number um, 643 and the Committee Report Number 13. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Aiding non consideration is in order. This is an act granting night shift differential pay to government employees. Uh, uh, and may we rec recognize, Mr. President, Senator Bong Revilla to sponsor and to interpolate a distinguished minority floor leader, Franklin Jr. So, the parliamentary status, we are in the period of interpolation. That's the correct. sponsor, Senator Bong Revilla um, Jr., is recognized. And um, the minority leader, Senator uh, Frank Lilon, is uh, recognized to interpolate. The sponsor, Mr. President, has asked for just a one-minute suspension to ask his staff to... In the meantime, session is suspended.
right, Mr. President, ready to resume. Session resume. Mr. President, yes, uh, you may proceed. Thank you. May, will the gentleman sponsor yield to a few questions on the spirit of his deposition? Yes, Mr. President, uh, it's an honor and privilege. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we will avail of the period of interpolation to clarify certain issues. We are in favor of this measure, but uh, we want to make sure that it does not cause problems which will defeat the purpose of the law. So we, it is on that premise that we raise the following questions on the spirit of interpolation. On section one, on coverage, it section says one. section one, government employees, including those in, in government owned and controlled corporation, whether, whether the nature of their employment is permanent, contractual, temporary, or casual. The first question is, up to what grade level would this apply? Uh, the, the cabinet secretary, is he entitled to like differential pay, Mr. President? Because if you read the section one, the, the, the uh, uh, secretary of the Senate is entitled to like differential. And that one, we will oppose, uh, Mr. President. Yes, uh, although, she, although she agrees. Uh, huh? Although she agrees, we will oppose. <laughs> but yes, seriously. Mr. Seriously, the definition on Section 1 is so broad so that it includes everybody. From sal uh, the answer, Mr. President, is from salary grade 1 to salary to, to, to 24. Grade, salary grade 1? To 24. To 24. 24 and below. Okay. Up to uh, division chief uh, level, Mr. Okay, President. so it's uh, up to salary grade 24. At the appropriate time, uh, should we amend this, port, this, this provision so that yeah. the application is clear that beyond grade 24, uh, night differential pay is not applicable? We welcome that, uh, Mr. Right. President. And the premise we assume, Mr. President, is that beyond salary grade 24, it is in, they, they are considered as supervisory employees? Is that what it Yes, means? Your Honor. Yes, Mr. President. Okay, so at the appropriate time. Now, next question on Section 1. It says uh, the, the uh, government employees shall be paid night differential pay at the rate not exceeding 20% of their hourly basic rate. Who determines, uh, who, who determines the amount, the rate, if it's because it says not exceeding 20%. So, 19%, 18%, 15%. Who determines that, uh, Mr. President? It's the agency, Mr. President, as long as it, it will not exceed 20%. The head of the agency? That's correct. Okay. And at, at the appropriate time, that will, this provision will be amended, I assume. And, and usually, Mr. President, the, the, the uh, finance office Sorry? of the agency. So it is the head of the agency. That's correct. Uh, in the case of, of, of the Senate, it is the Senate president. Yes, Mr. President. OK, Mr. President, uh, are our employees in the Senate uh, being given night differential pay? Obviously, they are covered because there's already 622. According to the Senate Secretary, no. No, they're not. They're Actually, not. Mr. President, they are covered, but they are not receiving the night differential. Sorry? They are covered, but they are not receiving the night differential pay. So they are covered, yes. Under this definition, they are covered, sir. And uh, are, are we saying that our people here are not being paid that dif night differential? No. No? No, they're not. So once we pass this law, uh, 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 is that the only They will time? benefit. As long na pasok po sila from 6 o'clock p.m. up to 6 a.m. Dito po inaayon dito sa panukalang batas natin. Sir? For example, ngayon po, lumagpasan tayo ng 6 o'clock. So, pag umabot tayo ng 7 o'clock, 
may, meron na po silang matatanggap na night differential pay. So, effective when we pass this law? Come again. When we pass this law? Um, Mr. President, there is a budget circular number eight, series of 1995, where which uh, prescribing guidelines and procedures for the grant of night shift differential pay to government employees. And basically, it covers all government employees. That's correct, Mr. President. Um, well, just to make it clear, this... Uh, With this bill, uh, Mr. President, we, we just want to institutionalize ito pong uh, benepisyo na natatanggap natin. Ano? Uh, in private sector, ang night shift differential pay ay nasa labor code na po. Okay. Pero para po sa mga empleyado ng gobyerno, wala pa silang kaakipat na nabatas. Ang circular pa, pa kasi po ay madali pong baguhin, but ang issuance, no, authority. With the passage of this measure, only act of Congress can amend or repeal it, Mr. President. Well, my problem, sir, is that my reading uh, under 5.1 of the budget circular, uh, number 8, series of 1995, uh, it would appear that the, uh, that the uh, circular, well, it's not, comp it's not compulsory, but directory. Night shift differential may be granted to government employees at the rate not exceeding 20% of the hourly rate. So it does not establish the right uh, to night differential, but it authorizes Correct. The, the grant of the night But with this, uh, with this law, it's mandated. Na it's obligado mandated. Po. That's correct, Mr. Okay. President. Now, that's, where, that's, that's why we are asking these questions, to make sure that the law achieves its purpose and not create problems. Um, <clears throat> we note that uh, the uh, uh, that the, there is a committee amendment. Instead of saying uh, that the hours of work uh, that, that that the that the work between uh, ten o'clock in the morning, um, six six o'clock in the morning. Uh, no, the the your your. The bill says starting at uh, shift between, uh, if you look at line four and five, it says the 20% of the hourly basic rate of the employees for each hour of work performed between 10 o'clock in the morning and where? Wala pong nakalagay. Well, Mr. President, uh, yung po yung ating i amend during the committee, uh, during the, the amendments uh, time, Mr. President. So this will be, uh, yes, there is an amendment here. It says, uh, the committee amendment uh, says after the word between amended to include the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. of the following day. So it will not, not just 10 yes, o'clock? Yes, yes, Mr. President. Okay, now. Let's go now to section, uh, to line uh, line 14, section two on page one. It says the following employees are not covered by this act. Letter A, public health workers who are already covered by Republic Act 7305, um, they are not covered, the nurses are not covered, uh, public health workers are not covered, particularly <laughs> nurses, because they are already receiving night differential pay. Is that correct, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Now, President. but the public health workers are only receiving 10%. Um, Health workers are excluded in the proposed measure because they are already receiving night shift differential pay uh, pursuant to Republic Act number 7305 or the Magna Carta of Public Health That's Workers. That's correct, sir. Right. But once we pass this law, you will be creating uh, 
discriminatory provisions because the public health employees only get 10% and the rest of the bureaucracy can theoretically get 20%. Um, we gave uh, a higher uh, differential rate to other government employees in recognition of the fact that they do not receive the additional benefits given to public health workers like hazard pay, uh, subsistence allowance, longevity pay, laundry allowance, and, and remote assignment uh, allowance, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, my experience indicates that this is not enough reasoning for the nurses to accept uh, their, uh, their, their, their treatment that they will be receiving less than what the other bu uh, the other employees in the government will be receiving. You mentioned uh, hazard pay, night uh, what other, other benefits. Yep. That is of a different nature. Hazard pay, for example, is because of the hazard that they are exposed to. Nothing to do with the hours of work rendered during the night. So we cannot use as a reason that they are receiving hazard pay or the other benefits because those are for speci a specific purpose and cannot be used to rationalize the uh, lesser amount of night differential pay that they are entitled to. This is the reason why we are asking these questions because we know the noble purpose of the good sponsor in uh, sponsoring this bill, but it can create problems. So and we, it's better that we present these problems to the good sponsor and to the chamber so that the remedial amendment can be introduced. And if this is a recognized problem, we better uh, confront it at this stage. I, yes, I, I, I agree, uh, Mr. President. But as of now, uh, the DOH, uh, meron po silang uh, uh, night differential pay. For 2020, it's about 90.6 million. Yes. So if that's 10 percent, if uh, kung gagawin po natin 20 percent yan, so uh, mga 180 million something uh, or one, 190. That is a matter that I am addressing. Yes. Uh, I have no solution, but that is an issue which must be confronted because you will be uh, 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 you'll be uh, discriminating against the nurses. I am in favor of putting in them at 20%. So everybody gets 20%. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, yeah. Moreover, Mr. President, you must remember that uh, the, uh, as late as uh, last month, there was a decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Ang Nurse Party List, where the effort to bring the salary grade below 15 uh, was struck down by the Supreme Court as and law as illegal. And therefore, they have, for the past several years, the nurses have been prejudiced uh, uh, through a salary scale that is not allowed, that is not authorized under the law. Now, if we pass this, I think it, the situation will worsen because then you are discriminating against them by virtue of a provision of Republic Act 7305, which grants them only uh, um, 10%. My suggestion, Mr. President, is we exclude the public health uh, workers from uh, uh, line, four, line 15 of page 1 so that they, they are covered, uh, they, so that the public health personnel would yes. be covered by... I will accept, Mr. President. Uh, will be more than willing to accept it. Ang layunin po natin dito ay uh, masuportahan po natin mga nag-overtime natin mga kawani ng ating nagtatrabaho ng gabi. You know? So, those, so by delete, by amending or deleting uh, lines 8, uh, 15 and 16 on page 1, in effect, we will be uh, covering public health workers. Is that correct, sir? Yes, yes, Mr. President.
<coughs> now, um, on line 16 of line page 16. one, there is a proposed committee amendment by adding a second paragraph. And let me read the committee proposal. Uh, the following personnel are not covered by this act. Government employees whose schedule of office hours fall between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Services rendered beyond the regular eight-hour work schedules are paid over time in accordance with existing laws, rules, and regulations. So if you're, this means that if your regular office hours fall between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., you are not entitled to the night shift differential. Is that understanding correct, sir? Yes, yes, Mr. President. Uh, why is that so, What sir? they will receive is overtime. Why is overtime pay? May we ask, sir, why are we excluding these employees when it is a night differential and their work falls at night? Their work falls at night, but if it's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm sorry. That's not included. Yes, Mr. President. Kung ang pasok po nila... Sorry, sorry. I take that back, sir. All right. Oh, you, you take it back? Okay. Oh, okay. So if they work beyond, beyond 6 p.m., even if it's regular hours, they are entitled to night shift differential. Is that no, correct, sir? No, no, sir. Huh? Overtime pay po yan. Overtime pay. Six, six, six In other words, ang covered lang po nung dito sa ating measure is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. <coughs> okay. The following day. So if you are uh, working from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then you work until 7 or 8 p.m. overtime lang, hindi night shift. Over, overtime po yan. Sa overtime right. pay sila. Thank overtime. you. Bakit po hindi kasama ang night shift differential <coughs> for the hours that uh, you work in the example given by the Senate President? <coughs> ang purpose po nito is for graveyard shift uh, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., Mr. President. Okay. Um, if that is the purpose of the measure... The measure. Uh -huh. I want to give us an example, our schedule of work in the Senate. We all know that we work 40 hour week compressed into four days, so that each work day would be 10 hours. And uh, a portion of the 10 hours would fall after 6 p.m. What is the entitlement of our Senate employees? Overtime pay, Mr. President. Night, not night. night differential pay? Overtime. Overtime, Mr. President. They wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not trying to cater to our uh, employees. I'm just uh, analyzing this from the point of, of, point of law that if you work between the hours of, of, uh, of 6 p.m. and uh, beyond the work hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., you are entitled to night differential. Uh, Mr. That is why I'm raising the question Mr. President, far as our Senate employees are concerned. Yeah, for example, Mr. President, yung mga usaan natin, three shifting sila. So, kung sino po yung uh, nag, uh, nasa night shift, sila po ang entitled doon. Yung pumapasok doon sa 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. But akala ko hindi po sila kasama kung yan ang regular hours nila. Kasi three shifting na po sila, eh, Mr. President. 
Do I take it ang sinasabi ninyo uh, ginoong sponsor? Uh, Doon sa usa uh, ang ship merong, let's say, ano, 4 a.m. o 5 a.m. ang bisa. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Yung mga yun, entitled sila sa night ship differential. Yes, Pero, Mr. President. Uh, in other words, hindi, kaya hindi sila entitled na uh, yung mga 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. hindi entitled kasi pag lumampas sila, overtime ang tawag, Over, hindi overtime. night ship differential. Ganun yes, po ba? Ganun yes, pa, Mr. President. Well, I can understand that that's the purpose of, or that's what uh, is meant by the good sponsor. I just want to point out that a night shift differential is paid because they are in the night work. And, Correct, Mr. President. And uh, therefore, it is not enough justification that because that they are not entitled to it because they're already working overtime, they're paying paid overtime. That's not rational, that's not, is that valid, uh, Mr. President? That's all we were saying. Uh, but uh, again, we are just uh, looking at the proposal of the good sponsor, um, <coughs> whether or not uh, that's uh, valid, uh, or that, that, that policy is uh, good policy, I leave that to the chamber. <coughs> now, the third exclusion, Mr. President, are Government employees whose services are required or are on call 24 hours a day, such as uniformed personnel of the armed forces or the AFP, mm -hmm. PNP, uh, Bureau, of Manage Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and Bureau of Protection. In other words, the military and uniformed personnel are excluded from the coverage of the That's law. That's correct, Mr. President. Now, but the law uses the word such as, and this is an enumeration as an, uh, uh, by example. Are there other uh, uh, employees who could possibly be excluded? Or is this enumeration exclusive? Baka po pwedeng uh, during calamities, yung mga civilian employees po, baka working 24 hours. <laughs> Kaya nga po, but they, they are working, the, if you're going to follow the provision, the, uh, the following are excluded, letter C, government employees who serves, whose services are required or are on call 24 hours a day, such as, in other words, those employees falling under this category are not entitled to night differential pay. But uh, you, the, the, uh, the, the bill uses the phrase, such as. That's why you are asking the question, if such as means that there are other categories of government employees who, will be, who can be excluded from the coverage of the law. Because such as is uh, very clearly an enumeration of examples. Yes, yes, Your Honor. So, we have any amendments, Mr. President? Mayroon pang ibang kawanin ng pamahalaan na pwedeng hindi makatanggap ng night differential. Yeah, the DBM will check, Mr. President, and we'll just include it during the time of period of amendments. All right. Yes, because we better clarify this. Yes, Mr. President. Because one group of employees that immediately comes to mind is the, the NBI people. Exactly, they're exactly the same as the uniform personnel. They are on call. That's correct. Uh, so we will look, look we, into that, Mr. President. We suggest that the good sponsor looks into this and clarify what this means. Because uh, we do not know anymore who are excluded and who are, uh, who are, uh, who are covered. That's a very good point, Mr. Mm. President. We will take note of that. Mm. Uh, would the measure apply to those who work on shifts, whether on temporary or permanent basis? In other words, uh, the, the way I recall the answer, they are not covered if they are on shifts? 
or am I wrong, sir? They, 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 are, they are covered, Mr. President. Uh, they are covered. Just, just uh, 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 as long as, as the, long the ship is at night, from huh? 6 to 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., Mr. President. Mm. They are covered. They are covered. Kasama din po yung mga contractual, oh. casual, temporary, and, and permanent. The gentleman from Sambales is all smiles because the, if it passes that way, if the bill passes that way, the people from the Blue Ribbon Committee will have overtime and night shift differential pa. And vacation leave. And vacation leave, eh, <laughs> parang ayaw pumayag ng mga iba. <laughs> In fact, uh, just earlier, Mr. President, Senator Pia Caetano was entitled to night differential because Senator Gordon was interpolating her. <laughs> but the agreement, sir, was that Senator Gordon was going to pay for it, not to oh, sign yeah. Anyway, yeah. Mr. President, uh, just to make it light for a while. Yes. The, uh, present, the uh, uh, present wording of the bill on lines 13 and 14 on page uh, <coughs> yeah? two? on page two yeah? on page two Mr. President uh, it says that the uh, uh, funds shall be taken from the savings generated but uh, the committee proposes to amend this? Yes, yes, Mr. President. And uh, it will be against the existing appropriations uh, that are uh, of the found in the National General Appropriations Act. Yes, Mr. President. Now, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Would uh, government employees uh, um, who are civilians uh, working in the National Disaster Coordination Council uh, entitled to night shift differential if they perform work during calamities beyond uh, the or during the the uh, hours uh, prescribed uh, by law as being entitled to night differential? They're in, yes, uh, yes, Mr. President, they are entitled mm -hmm. at night shift mm -hmm. from 6 p.m. to mm -hmm. 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. want to put on record, Mr. President, ito po yung mga tumatanggap na ng night shift differential pay, DND, yung mga Government Arsenal Veterans Medical Center, the DOST, Pagasa Pillbox, DOTR, Philippine Coast, uh, Coast Guard, and other executive offices, TESDA. Uh, Mr. President, put on uh, record, Mr. President. Uh, I think we have raised all the concerns that we have. The uh, good sponsor has committed that the appropriate amendments uh, will be introduced. So we are manifesting that we no longer have questions. Uh, we'll just await the committee amendments that will be, uh, pro that will be proposed <coughs> to reflect uh, the concerns, to answer the concerns that we have raised in this period of interpretation. Thank all you right. very much, Mr. Thank President. you, Mr. All President. Right. Uh, we're very much willing to accept all your Amendments, Mr. No, President. Mr. President, it is supposed to be committee amendments. And he's supposed to work, not ask Mr. President. 
<laughs> All right, Mel Taken, uh, the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, with that, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 643. Any objection? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. President, before we act on the motion, yes. Actually, no other member will, will you? <laughs> you want to well, close the period of interpolation? No, Mr. President. I think Senator Gordon wants to interpolate. Senator Gordon. Huh? Ah, no, no. Okay, very good. <laughs> because we already asked for overtime pay. Oh. <laughs> Mr. President, um, with that, no other member listed their listed mm. to interpolate the measure. I move to close the period of interpolation. Any objection? Hearing none. Period of interpolation is closed. With that, Mr. President, I move <coughs> to suspend consideration of the bill. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. If you call another bill, uh, we will ask for night differential. <laughs> One last, Mr. President. It's actually not for interpolation anymore because our dear minority floor leader had agreed no longer to interpolate. On our measure, Mr. President, this is our separate facility for prisoners convicted of heinous crimes. Mm -hmm. I move that we, uh, uh, I move, Mr. President, that we take consideration of the measure first. Resume consideration. consideration is in order. This is Senate Bill Number 1055. I move that we close the period of interpolation, Mr. President. Hearing no objection, period of interpolation is closed. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll just await the amendments, proposed amendments of our dear minority floor leader to, to take it. Yes. So take All it right. up again. We move to suspend consideration of Senate Bill Consideration of the measure suspended. Uh, Mr. President, just some admin matters. Uh, I think this is an election. Well, when did you schedule the anti-terrorism? Uh, well, uh, we spoke together with the minority floor leader. He's just studying the measure just a bit. Mm -hmm. And they've already have an agreement with Senator Laxon when the debates will be, Mr. All President. Right. So one of the priorities being asked yes, by Mr. the President. Department of National Defense. Absolutely, Mr. President. All right, thank so, you. So, uh, Mr. President, I move that we elect the members of the Senate contingent to the Quality Affordable Medicines Oversight Committee under Section 45 of Republic Act 9502. The chair of the Oversight Committee is the chair of the Senate Committee on Trade, and the vice chair is the chair of the Senate Committee on Health. The co-chair and vice chair are respective chairpersons of their counterparts in the House of Representatives. Mr. President, I move that we nominate and elect the following senators as members. Uh, your, your, your team, Mr. President. So I. Yes, we hereby designate Senator uh, Maria Lourdes, Nancy Binay, Senator Pia Caetano, and Senator Risa Ontiveros yes, as uh, yeah. uh, members of the uh, committee, oversight committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no other matters, Mr. President? All no right. other administrative matters? Do we have uh, additional reference? Or no? Tomorrow. No? Uh, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Wednesday, November 27, 2019. Any objection? Hearing none. Session is suspended until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, November 27, 2019.